Welcome to the Federation X podcast. And tonight it is a movie cast. Tonight, uh, here with Samite and Maverick. Uh, you guys all know Chris and Eric. We are going to talk about comic book movies. And at some point, we are going to be graced with the presence of my delightful young daughter. Uh, so keep yourselves in check. Uh, but we've asked her to come because she brings uh, a very different perspective and yet I think a very insightful one. And we wanted this to be a very interesting conversation about a type of movie that all of us on here enjoy um, to varying degrees, as you're going to find out. And so today we're going to talk about a number of movies. We probably won't get through them all. There's so much material out there for this conversation. Uh, you know, 20 years ago, we didn't have a whole lot of things to talk about. Um, but now there's a new television show, a new movie being announced every week. And we're going to dig into, I think, some of the ones that maybe are a little bit more controversial, maybe have a little bit more uh, mass appeal. But we're also going to open it up to anybody who's in the live stream that wants to ask questions or throw out topics. I don't think we're gonna close this off to anything. I think what I do wanna do as we get going though is be really clear about what the format is gonna be. So the format is gonna be one movie at a time. We'll pick a topic. I think it's entirely possible we run off on some tangents as a result of the topic we pick and that's fine, we'll stick with it. Um, we have posted a link in the Discord. So if you are a member of our Discord and you wanna jump in, this is being done with the webinar structure of Zoom, which means you can join and you can hit the Q&A channel on Zoom. And I can see that you're there, which means if you say, hey, I have some thoughts on this particular topic, I can pull you in and you can join us for long enough to talk about the topic before we boot you back out. So you're welcome to come and jump in with us um, if that's something that interests you. And if you ramble or make no sense or have a really terrible take, uh, then I will kick you out. But outside of that, we now then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, your 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 really terrible takes are the few that are gonna survive. I don't know what to tell you. I'm prepared for them. Uh, I, I fully expect them. So and I, I see Val's out there already saying he's just here to talk about the X-Men Origins Wolverine movie, which was a complete and utter piece of trash. Shit show. Trash. The only thing it like gave Valentine us Valentine himself. Any meaningful value that came out of it was that we got an inkling and a terrible one that one day Ryan Reynolds would be Deadpool. That was its only value, Val. I don't know that we have anything else to talk about on it. <laughs> um, but as we as we dig in for it, um let's let's kick it off. I, I see. <laughs> Axel's really frustrated nobody came on with the shirt off. Sorry, Axel. Tried to take it off room. Yeah. Um, I think I think this one everybody knows. We've thrown this around a fair bit, but it's the easy starting point of the conversation. It's probably the comic book movie that has gotten the most post release discussion. And it's hard to weigh that because Marvel ended a 10 year story arc, but how, how do you look past how much took place when Zack Snyder released Justice League, then had years of people talking about how badly they wanted to see his version of the movie. Uh, they rallied support for it because they hated the reworks that Josh Whedon did. They, they got enough support to convince them to give him a bunch of money and do reshoots. He did a reshoot and turned it into a four hour epic so we could see his real vision. And his real vision was a giant turd floating in a toilet. So let's talk about Justice League and the Snyder Cut. Um, and I think I've made it abundantly clear what side of this conversation I'm gonna take out of the gate, but this should be an interesting conversation. So let's open with that because I know I'm talking to a couple of people that maybe don't hate it the way that I hate it. <laughs> that's a that's a kind way of putting it. <laughs> I I watched I watched the original, uh, the one that Whedon did. I didn't really care for it that much. Um, I I'm a I'm a big fan of Batman, Superman, 
Wonder Woman to see them all in the same, you know, uh, in, in the same group. That was good. I enjoyed that. Not real keen on Cyborg. Don't know a lot about the character because I am a, I'm more of a comic book movie fan than I am a comic book fan, which I know we'll talk about later. But um, I didn't, I didn't really like the first one. The second one, I liked a little bit more simply because it expanded on, on, on the topics from the first one. It took, it took some different directions. To me, it made a little more sense. Um, but again, I'm coming at this from, a, I, I, I don't know the source material, you know, for me to, to, to be hypercritical about, you know, did, you know, like for instance, if we were going to talk about X-Men, I would be like, Hey, the first one was good. And the other two were shit. And I could sit here and rattle off every reason why I ate those. But this one, I can't really do it. I just, as a fan of those particular superheroes, it's not my top, tw it's not in my top 10 of movies, but it's not the worst one I've ever seen. I, I was okay with the Snyder cut. It was a little long, but. So that's my thing. I think the, I think the thing that I would say uh, about kind of what you've thrown out there, first of all, you're going to get lots of hot takes. Here's a hot take. X2, better than anything Snyder's ever done on superheroes. Snyder is a complete and utter trash show when it comes to superheroes. Now, before I completely go off on this, Chris, you want to jump in? Do you have thoughts? Um... For me, the characters have to be the same as I grew up reading. That's where I enjoy the movie. Yeah. Snyder or Norweden pulled that off. They were not Justice League characters. And the choice of characters, they went with the modern Justice League, which, you know, to me is like, oh, there were so many other choices, so many other people to choose. Um, the story itself, eh, it was an okay movie. But not being able to watch the characters develop, like the Flash was awful, Cyborg was awful, Wonder Woman was definitely the best out of them all, Superman, uh, Batman, forget it. <laughs> so that's where I enjoy a movie from. I yeah. love when the the comic is being, and that's why I'm, when I'm, when you're going off of on Snyder, I'm going, oh, there is one movie that I really, really like because he really, really did a good job of making the comic work. So we'll come back to that. Exactly. I'm, I'm yeah. open to the conversation. You said a couple of things that I found kind of interesting. And so one, can we lay it at Joss Whedon's feet that he had to clean up the giant steaming turd that Zack Snyder left him with? Like a lot of people got upset at what he did, but he did what the studio asked him to do. For me, the one moment in the movie, and you can only see it in the original theatrical version, that actually captures the tone of the characters was the secret ending that suggested the Flash Superman race, where Superman was what he's supposed to be, hope-filled and lighthearted and loving of his peers. And the Flash was this optimistic guy like, I cannot run Superman, right? Like, to me, that was the only moment in any version of the movies where they got the characters right. Fair enough, because it was that directly out of the comics for me. Right. They that was that happened a couple times in the comics, but yeah, you're right. It was it was off the page. And so I I, I wonder if, like, yeah, I, I didn't think Whedon's version was good at all, but I wonder if that's his fault. Like, when somebody else has filmed eighty percent of a movie, and then loses their job. And the studio says, I don't want you to redo it. Just finish it. That's like getting half a tattoo and going to another tattoo artist and going, okay, finish it. Yeah. Like, is it the new artist's fault that the first artist drew a dog's breakfast? Like, so I, I, I guess I wonder. it also depends on how much, you know, as a director, how much was he allowed to do? I get, and that's something we don't know. Right. Um, and was Snyder let go or did he not leave because of his daughter's death? So I think the official answer is he left because of his daughter's death. I think the true answer might be a little less okay. um, like obviously the death of his daughter was a gross tragedy and an awful thing. But I, I have read more than one thing that has suggested that he was headed towards a termination before that. 
And by, and by no out. means am I suggesting him yeah. staying on would have made it any better. Well, it's, it's clearly it didn't because the Snyder Cut made me sit through more time to hate the movie more than I hated it originally. Um, also, I, I, I think the the question of characterization. So for me, it's a couple of things. Like I know this isn't a big deal for Matt because he's not a big reader of these comics, but the entire you know Snyderverse, if you will, to me was awful. Nothing he did in DC was any good. And I say that because what we got was uh, a Man of Steel movie that is a great movie about an alien with lots of powers. It's a terrible movie about Superman. It completely misunderstands who Superman is. Casts him as a sullen, hopeless. He learned none of the Midwest values that his parents should have poured into him, which was always the core of the story is the alien who it's the nurture versus nature story, right? It doesn't matter that Krypton was cold and calculating. He was raised by loving Midwest farmers and he became hope to a world that needed it. That's the story of Superman. Watch, watch Brightburn. You'll see the exact antithesis. Brightburn was awesome. Right. And, and I loved everything they did with it. <laughs> oh, and here is my daughter and she would love, I'm sure, to jump in and, and talk about this with us because they got it all wrong. And so once Brightburn was fabulous. I loved Brightburn. I'm sure you did. <laughs> Especially the ending I liked. Hey. Hi. And sporting an X-Men shirt. <laughs> Came prepared. So did did you catch anything as you were jumping in? No. So we're right in the middle of talking about the abomination of the Snyder verse. Oh, okay, yeah. And I was just putting forward the point that like right from step one in uh, Man of Steel, he showed us that he doesn't actually know who the characters are because Clark doesn't show any of that Midwest farmers like not even, not even just Clark, um, his dad, right? Jonathan Kent suggests at some point in that movie he should just let a bus full of kids die, which to keep his secret, right? Like what? <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, I. It was, part. <laughs> it was, and so then then we get to Batman versus Superman and we we meet a Batman who's planning murder. M maybe you don't get who Batman is. <gasps> right? I mean, it, I think it's not that there was a point in the mid 2000s where Batman was going down that road, accepting of a gun. I mean, in fact, there's a famous picture with him that with that M60 or whatever it was that he was carrying. There was a point there and they jumped onto that Batman, which wasn't as canon as they wanted. And so that's the Batman they chose. It's and it was just, you know, a few issues of, right. of this guy, right? That's it's it's a bad choice oh absolutely yeah. right like the the idea that that we think we're going to build a universe around a batman that thinks he should be plotting the murder of somebody who hasn't technically done anything wrong but what if he does i mean i just i i'm not a big fan of it i didn't like it and then and then we get you know his take on doomsday and that was trash oh yeah and we find out that you know, kryptonite makes Superman lose fights to Batman unless he's fighting Doomsday and then he can carry a kryptonite spirit and everything's fine. Like, it just, it's such bad story. And the whole Martha moment, like I was done with him with Martha. Like, we're going to fight to the death, but my mom has the same name as you. Well, let's be best friends. And then they take, when Superman flies into the air and gets zapped, it's not even from that comic series. It's not even like that's from a completely different thing. An yeah. awesome picture, but the wrong damn series. <laughs> and I was frustrated. Why did you have to use that? He, I think he's super prone to that though, like cherry picking bits and pieces that he likes from everything and then thinking that if he just like puts them all together somehow with a bunch of effects, it'll turn out good on the other side. But 
the story enough. gets lost and the characterizations suck. Right. That's totally the case. So we get to this rework. So first of all, Justice League failed. Like it wasn't great. It, it had all kinds of holes in it. Then we get to this rework. And Maddie, you missed it earlier, but Mav uh, shared with us that as a person who doesn't read the comics, he enjoyed it. And yeah, I haven't yet gotten I, around to kick wait, him wait, in the nuts for it. Wait, 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 wait. I, I didn't say, I didn't say I enjoyed it. I said I didn't think it was that bad. I, it, 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 is it a movie that I would watch again in the future? Maybe once or twice, but not like, it's to me, it's not like uh, Alien, a movie I would watch every day for the rest of my life, you know? If, if you watch it twice more, you'll have given him 12 hours of your life for what I can only assume was a script written by monkeys drunk on Newfie Screech. Well, that's okay. I got I got another hot take for you. I liked Affleck as Batman. So I'm That's not a hot take. I'm Affleck was a good have... Batman. <laughs> what? No, Affleck is a good Batman who goes. Okay, I, have, I thought I was going to have to leave right then and there. So. No, you're good. I, I actually thought Affleck, I, I feel bad for Affleck because I, I think you really wanted to do a good, and he got a bad script. And the worst part is, I hear, true or not, I hope it's not, mm -hmm. but I hear he's kind of taking that position like, I'll only come back as Batman if it's in Zack Snyder's universe mm -hmm. because. I hate Zack Snyder's universe more than I like him as Batman. Yeah. So, well, I mean, all, when it when it comes to all these these recent DC movies, I, and and again, yeah, I get the Man of Steel. Okay, that that's not the Superman because I grew up with Christopher Reeve. Hell, let's be honest, I grew up with the 1950 something Adventures of Superman was the first one. George I, Reeves. Yeah, George Reeves. And I understand what he's supposed to be, but I like the Man of Steel because I I, I I found that take slightly intriguing. But then we know that I'm all of, I like drama, I like storytelling, and to yeah. me, I liked seeing a darker side. But but for me, with Superman, there's a little it's it's weird. Okay, so when I was a kid, I literally thought my old man was Superman. Nothing ever hurt the guy. I watched, I seriously, I watched a radiator in a car blow up, burn him, and the man never uttered a sound, right? So to me, growing up, my dad was Superman. Well, my dad passed away back in 2016. And the first thing I told my mother when I got home after that, I was like, Superman doesn't die. Right. So when I watch Superman movies, when I watch the interactions between Superman and his father, it's kind of like a personal level thing for me, which is why I'm probably more tuned and I like them better because it reminds me of my, of my father in a way, you know? Um, but yeah, I, that, that's not who Superman is. I get it. Right. I still like man of steel though, because of that outside influence. So let me see if I can poke holes in your like of man of steel, because I think I can. Oh, I'm sure so, you can. <laughs> so if you haven't seen the Snyder cut, I am going to spoil it or at least a small bit of it. In one of the closing movies of the uh, scenes of the movie, we find out that the general that we met in Man of Steel is actually John Jones, the Martian Manhunter. Yep. Okay. Now the Martian Manhunter is a Superman class powerhouse who apparently didn't feel the need to get involved in the war to save the planet and apparently didn't feel the need to get involved while the Kryptonians in Man of Steel destroyed Metropolis. If that's not a massive writing flaw, I don't know what is. It, oh yeah, and I, and I totally agree. Like I said, I knew when we were doing this show that some of my takes were not gonna go over well, but like I said, for me, I like the interaction I, I like to see that slightly darker type of Superman. I like the interaction between the father. One, one of the quintessential moments to me of that entire movie that really hit me was when the tornado was coming and his father was like, don't. And he stood there and watched this. That tore me no up. No chance. No chance that happens. But in another universe with the right Superman, we all know that doesn't happen. But, but With I Superman, like period. 
That yes. doesn't happen. Right. Because Clark Kent's not afraid of a tornado. <laughs> like, right. Stand to the bridge. Make sure you're okay, invulnerable son. What? And I'm and, you and I'm not no gonna... hope on this, Jeff. I mean, you you're you could be uh, right as rain in, in May. The man has taken the movies and put a heartstrings on it and made it so personal there's absolutely nothing we can say right <laughs> except that i would suggest i'm not saying that against you oh, no. it's it's something that you value at a whole different level that we can talk about well hell I'll, I'll do you one better too because jeff and i've had many discussions about this in private before i also when i look at superman i think of one of my one of the problems I have with faith sometimes as it comes to God, you have all this infinite power. Why do you let things happen like this? So when I see Superman standing under that underpass and his father telling him no, and he doesn't do anything, it breaks my heart because I, I wonder sometimes when I look at what, what goes on in this world today, how you can sit there and do nothing. So it's... Uh, I can answer that, but I think it would take us way off. No, course. that would be way, way. No, no, we. Are, I'm just, right. uh, and, and again, like I'm saying, I'm not defending the movie and saying it's the best movie. I'm no. telling you why I liked it versus why other people don't. Yeah, and I, I would make the argument, and and rightly or wrongly, because it's a personal connection for you. Right. That if you really saw Superman and your father, these movies don't do him justice, because these movies don't have Superman in them. Well, I see, but when I watch, when I watch Chris, the guy Rudy, wearing the suit doesn't make him Superman, right? He is no, inside. I and when I, makes and when I watch Chris, yeah, when I watch Christopher Reeve's version, I think about my old man too. But when I watch, when I watch Superman Returns, no, nothing, nothing. I get nothing from that one because, and nothing against Brandon Roth. I think he did okay. I just didn't like that movie at all. So I would put the moment in Superman Returns where Roth takes Lois up to fly. And she's given him all this attitude because he's been away and the world doesn't need you. And he says, can you hear that? And she says, no. And he says, I can. I can hear thousands of voices calling for help right now. I'll take that moment over anything Snyder's ever done with Superman. Because that's I Superman. I wouldn't debate you. <laughs> Honest Alan Scott, he's not wrong. <laughs> Let's uh, let's change gears. So we did like some other gaps for me. Um, we didn't get a Green Lantern. We got told Green Lanterns exist, but apparently they just yeah. gave yeah. up on Earth. I think part of the problem, though, is um, he threw in a bunch of like East, like name drops. I think just to kind of get the the ball like the the drama from it or like the fan attention but you can't do that if they don't have a place in that story because right. it's the same way that like mom will watch flash and be like well why don't they get the other guy from the other show to come help do this thing it would be so easy but it's not their story so you can't constantly have them coming in and saving the day or making things easy be because that's just like lame writing realistically you're not writing like one character story but then at the same time, then you can't throw in name drops here and there just for the sake of like the clout, I guess, for lack of a better word. But Oh my God, it's a mini Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> you did good, sir. I, I do good work. I don't know what to tell you. I I would say, and, and we got a lot of that, right? Like they they told you in the in the, especially in the Snyder Cup, they take the time to show you the initial battle against Darkseid's forces. And um, they show you a Green Lanterns involved in the battle. They show you the old gods involved in the battle. Um, I think, a, you know, you, you showed us Green Lanterns. We know that, that Snyder actually hired somebody to be Green Lantern and did early cameo shoots of them. Didn't put them in. We know that the Martian Manhunter was there the whole time and didn't stick his nose in the fight. Seems weird. Uh, the planet might end, but... You do you and sit on the sidelines and then show up afterwards and be like, I'm with you guys. Like, what? No, that's not a thing. You are, you're the definition of not with us. <laughs> like, <laughs> we went to war and you hid. <laughs> it's terrible. That's um, inconsistent. 
can can we address the fact that in in the Snyderverse, Barry Allen has his powers before he takes the job, where he gets his powers. Yeah. Yep. So how to get them? Okay, can we address the fact that in the Snyderverse, that's very clearly just Bart Allen. Behavior wise, yeah. With just a different name, because it's more. Oh, absolutely. Story. First thing they saw him. I mean, even that puppy dog pet shop thing was a Bart Allen move. It's it's Bart yeah. Allen. But it, I think you're right. I think he wanted Bart Allen, but he had to put in Flash because of the name drop. Mainstream. And so guess what? It's Barry. And how he got his powers? We only can assume <laughs> that enough people know it's through lightning striking chemicals while he's in his lab, you know, whatever. You have to have a lab and chemicals for that to happen. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay, so I have another question, and maybe, and I'm just going to keep poking holes because the Snyderverse is such a shit show. Um, if the reason given that the mother boxes have been dormant all these centuries, um, and they come to, when they come to life, the reason given that they come to life is there's no longer a Kryptonian to protect them, and the old gods are gone. But when the Kryptonian wakes up, they go, well, scrap this plan. The Kryptonian's back. So did that really have anything to do with it? But where was the Kryptonian when the four groups fought? You know, how they divided the mother box up amongst the four armies. Right. Well, there was no Kryptonian there. That's my point. Like, yeah. they gave this reason why they're ready to attack now, but... The reason doesn't hold up historically in the past. And if even if it was valid in the past, it's not valid the second Superman wakes up and isn't dead anymore. And yet they still keep coming. So what's the reason we waited all this time? Valentine, Valentine says, Mav, you're not putting up enough of a fight. Because I'm not because I'm not fighting, because I happen to agree with what they're saying. I just like the movie for my own reasons. And again, I was like is a very strong word. Like is a very strong word. I met I'm, the movie. I'm okay with it. I didn't completely hate it the way everybody else did, but that's just me. You watched I, it. I, I mean, watched it. Fair, like if you don't, if you didn't read the comics and you can't point out like that's inconsistent with the canon of this character, like it makes it a, a little easier to just be able to watch the movie. And right. I think, and I okay, think, hold on, hold on. I want to ask her a question. She's going to wait <laughs> any kind of defense of this. She's got to defend this. You felt cool with the way Zack Snyder viewed Amazons? No, I hated it. I was so pissed about that. But I've read the comics. So that's why I'm pissed. So I, I think it makes sense. Why don't you share? Because probably the guys don't pick up on it the way that you would pick up on it. Well, you loved the Amazons in Wonder Woman, hated them when Zack Snyder. You watched Wonder Woman. And also leading up to a man, I hated Gal Gadot <laughs> and was super defiant that she didn't look like an Amazon. She was just a really pretty hot chick that got cast as Wonder Woman and I was really bad until dad came back and was like, did you know that she like fights and like trains Israeli soldiers and is actually super jacked and like wants to do all her own stunts? And I was like, oh no, I didn't know any of that and ended up loving her and the way that they portrayed Amazons and Wonder Woman. And then we watched Justice League and I was like, I, did you notice like the difference between how they were portrayed by Patty Jenkins and how they were portrayed by Zack Snyder? Because right off the bat, their armor is not armor. It's just not. It's like tarps. I like don't even know what to, like crop tops. Like they, they look hot. They don't look like they're, they're also a lot thinner. Like the women that he uses as Amazons are pretty. Um, I think there's a few that were obviously the same cast, but the background Amazons in the Wonder Woman movie are always, almost always fighting, like, to kill, and they're, like, they're bigger women, and they're not pretty, they're not wearing face full of makeup with their hair done, like, they're sweaty, they're wearing actual armor that's historically accurate, as opposed to, like, his more, like, glittery, pretty armor, and it was just kind of like a changes the view of the Amazons, really. Fair. Absolutely, it's fair. 
I'm gonna I, I am legit gonna have to go back and watch that scene again because I didn't notice I because I liked I, I loved Wonder Woman. Loved Wonder Woman. Oh yeah. Uh but I didn't notice that at all until you just said that. And now literally when we're done, I'm gonna pull it up over here and I'm gonna go watch it again because I completely missed that. And that's all aside from also the fact that they get dummied in like four seconds in Zack Snyder's cut. And that's probably just a personal like bias, but you watch how like in depth and like accurate and intense their choreography, uh, choreography like fight scenes are in Wonder Woman. Like they, they have specific techniques and they, they, they use like team movements and in Zack Snyder, they kind of just run forward and then they get slaughtered in like five seconds. But and, that's, and that was my problem. I did not understand how the Amazonians could lose to a single guy because the Amazonians could have taken out Superman. It, it, the they, way they I understood them from reading the <laughs> <laughs> yeah, It's like you lost to this weird character. <laughs> also, that Steppenwolf digitally CGI'd character was trash. Yeah. It, was it wasn't awful. Steppenwolf. It wasn't the Steppenwolf from... The comics. That's what bugged me. It was okay, so I have a last comic book objection to Zack Snyder's Justice League. Um, I probably could up 30 more, but there's some other stuff we could talk about. So here's my last objection. His entire movie is based around Darkseid and Apocalypse coming for Earth. But he completely ignores that Jack Kirby created Darkseid and Apocalypse as the Yang to the new gods who are the Yin. So where's Orion, Darkseid's son, who fights for justice? Where's Light Ray? Where's High Father? Like, did they, they were just like, oh, he's going to take Earth and find the anti-life equation? I guess we're cool with that? Cherry picking. Right. I'll take the bad guy and ignore that the bad guy was created in parallel to the good guys. Yeah. And I'll just ignore that the good guys even exist. So apparently the next era of gods, because the old gods died, Apocalypse is one of the new gods. The new gods, they're all bad, I guess. There were no good people in the new gods. Like that's apparently the story Zack Snyder's going with. He's a shit storyteller. I'm done talking about it. Why, why Apocalypse in the first place? Why the Parademons? What was it because they could kill a whole bunch of them and nobody feels bad? Like, I, I don't, as a choice of a, of a nemesis in that movie, of Thanos. all the JLA, they could have had Starro that would have made better sense. Thanos. Yeah. Thanos is the reason. Exactly. Absolutely. Darkseid was the villain. Yep. Because he's the, he's the parallel. And they wanted in on some of that Marvel money. They just don't know how to go get it. And potentially because I think one of the Justice League cartoons actually starts with that story. They form the Justice League around the invasion of Earth. I think uh, one of the cartoons began that way. Yes, I'm just trying to remember which one it was. I think it was the the Justice which, League, like the ju first Justice League mo cartoon movie. Right. Yeah. I think that's right. And that became canon, which was only in the movies. Yeah. <laughs> if, if. Uh, so let me ask this question then because we talked about her briefly um, is Wonder Woman the best DC movie uh, to me it is why I because I just if, when, when you look at some of these other movies uh, and, and now now I'm gonna now I'm gonna rip on the movies I just sat here and told you that I liked because it has to be that way in in Man of Steel okay? Clark or, or Superman's going to get upset because he broke General Zod's neck. What, what about the 10,000 people that both of you just killed? You're not upset about that, but you're okay with this. Okay. Batman v Superman. There were parts of it I liked, but again, I felt like I was watching a Michael Bay movie. Boom, bam, boom, boom, boom. But the, the action is so action oriented. There's not any storytelling. Right. But I felt like with Wonder Woman, it did a good job with the pacing. It get, did a good job with the backstory. It did a good job introducing the characters to me. It, it the, the action sequences were amazing, but they weren't overdone. It just, to me, it's a all-around solid movie from start to finish for me. And it's I, my one of the bunch. 
I liked Wonder Woman. I thought it was a good movie. Was definitely not my top three. I'm mean, definitely my top three, but not number one for one reason. Wonder Woman did great to canonize the comics, but her villain did not. Again, of all the villains that they could have chosen, that was not, he was B at best. You don't like Ares as a choice? No, he was a B villain and he was done terribly, absolutely terribly. He was not the god that went face to face with Hippolyta and, and, you know, took her on. That was, he was weak. And it was a terrible, terrible character. Maddie? What? I'm, I'm waiting for your opinion. We're kind of going around here. Um, my opinion on what he just said or on what your question was? <laughs> both, both. I, I got thick skin. Okay, I got... Cool. Um, I don't know that I necessarily disagree about how he was done. I think he's a decent counterpart villain to Wonder Woman, though. I mean, in the comics, he comes up a lot in her story. Like, he is, that is canon. Um, and I think, like, the way that they went with the second movie it was a lot weaker. Like, had they chosen, like, I get that Cheetah would be a much more, like, classic, um, but it's kind of hard to tell an origin story while you're also telling her origin story. I think Ares fits into Diana's origin story, and so it kind of made sense to choose him, um, I, 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 I guess I, you could say that Dad doesn't like the third act, and I know that. I think the third act is trash in Wonder Woman. In the Lost first two Lost. acts, it should have been the best of all the DC movies. The third act is such a letdown. And I always argue, but I think logically, rationally speaking, if I remove the emotional attachment I have to the character, <laughs> the third act is a lot, a bit weaker. Like it, it really there are some like errors and they throw in random powers that it just makes no sense and i'm like you didn't have this for the entire movie and suddenly you have like a god power that you also never had in the comics so whatever um so that kind of sucked but i always like argue for it just because i waited so long to see a movie like that on the big screen that it was you get emotionally attached um but i actually weirdly enough don't i'm having a struggle telling you that that's my favorite dc movie so before you move on and tell me your favorite DC movie, I want you to know that Valentine, remember that name, is your favorite person who plays fake online wrestling with me. And the reason is because in the live stream, he said his name was Aries. I thought his name was Remus Lupin. Oh, it was. And dad can tell you that we sat in the theater and when they did the big reveal that he was Aries, I was like, like I was rattled. And he was like, you didn't, you didn't notice? And I was like, no, that's Remus Lupin. I have so much trust in that man. <laughs> like, <laughs> he's a good guy. <laughs> well, great casting, because I was, I didn't see it coming, but I should have. I, I think for me, the that. challenge was, um, before we go back to your favorite, like, I was fun. I, I thought Aries was the right villain for the story because Aries didn't have to be front and center. It could be about World War II, which or World War I, mm -hmm. which let us get Diana's origin story in. I was okay with all that. The climax was disappointing for two reasons. One, visually, the actor doesn't represent Ares well at all. Um, I think it was fine to see that as, as the human form that Ares had, had, had chosen to occupy, but I think it was really hard to argue for me when it was time to fight Diana that that form was who I wanted to see fight. And also, I found the fight lukewarm. B list kind of. Yeah, the best, the best fight, the best fights of the movie. It just and I and, and before we came on, just I was as just we, gonna say, tell that story. <laughs> I was watching as he came when I joined the Zoom. I'm actually on the part. She comes out of that trench, and every hair on my arm goes straight up. Me and too. <laughs> she. And when she's kicking those guys' ass in that town, sliding across the floor, that is like the best action sequence I've ever witnessed, right? He can tell you that when I'm um, when I'm upset or just need like a pick-me-up, I just Google No Man's Land Wonder Woman scene on YouTube, and we I make him watch it with me on the couch. <laughs> sure, we watch it a lot. Good for you. Yeah. Good for you. And but just real quick to clarify, too, since we were talking about it, and I, I did take this, we, we do have a top five list coming up a little later, so... I should say, of the current DC movies, like right here and now, Wonder Woman actually is my number one, but not actually my number one. 
ever. Thank you. I, sh I forgot to clarify that. So. Well, and so I was going to clarify, and that's why I was struggling with it. Like, what qualifies as DC movies to you? Well, I had that question too. Such a great question, and I intentionally leave it open ended. And, and such, like, my the answer gets a lot harder. <laughs> yeah, like, if you can choose the animated movies. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> I have no objections. I'm curious what you think and how you ranked. I know a lot of people. I, I know I see Brendan's on, and I know he's a big fan of the animated universe, not so much of the live-action universe. So, and I get that. Okay, and so mark your calendars. I will say that Brendan's right. Valentine is right. This is, the, I'll say, only once. But... Ares is a great villain, but the portrayal of him in the Wonder Woman movie was not. Yeah. And I agree uh, with that. So I'm going to, let's, let's, we, we've started to talk Wonder Woman. I'm going to skip 1984 because I see Axel is in the live stream and just said, hey, The Dark Knight is the best DC movie. Hot take, Christopher Nolan wouldn't know Batman if he met him in a dark alley while his parents were bleeding out. Christopher Nolan doesn't know shit about Batman, and The Dark Knight is not half the movie that everybody thinks it is. Yeah. I'm happy to be the odd man out in this conversation. No, no, I got a, I got a hot take on that, too. I like The Dark Knight, but not because of Batman. I, I liked it for one reason and one reason only, and that was Heath Ledger. Everybody likes oh, it for that's Joker. Solid. I love Heath Ledger. In that right. I could, and, and I will sit there and I will fast forward through every other part. Heath Ledger's on the screen. Stop. Watch you make a pencil disappear. Pam. Okay. Kip, kip. And of course, the classic coming out of the hospital. Click, 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 click. Click, click. Boom. You, that's. Ledger did a great job. A great job. It's a crappy movie. Absolutely. The His bad origin bad story was horrendous. That that whole Rachel Ghul and all it was just terrible. Batman began. So are we gonna talk about Rachel Ghul actually being like just a white European guy? Like seriously? They, they have not portrayed him right yet. So no. <laughs> it's trash. And by the way, extra hot take. I wish Jordan was here so he could get mad at me for saying this. Rachel Ghul is Batman's greatest enemy. The Joker is just some guy that got out of a loony farm. And with one punch, the fight's over. I think the mistake comes from, like, if you actually look at the writing, Joker just comes up more because he's obsessed with the Batman. Just because yeah. he's around all the time doesn't make him the biggest enemy. Yeah. Makes him insane. Which he's, is the he's easily the most popular. Yeah. But not the best. Uh, also, Valentine would like to know if anybody else cheered when Maggie Gyllenhaal died. <laughs> Just him? Probably. <laughs> I don't remember cheering, but I don't remember crying either. There's, there's, uh, so I, I have a lot of personal, like, obviously, for me, the comic book rules. And so if you can't tell the comic book story, my big beefs, the handling of Rachel Ghoul was awful. The overall story, like, why the League of Assassins cares about Gotham of all cities, like, it's just a terrible take. Like, this one city in America is so freaking important to the world that the League of Assassins is going to travel all the way across the world to destroy it. Piss off. Right? Like, that. get out of here. Now, at least in The Dark Knight, it was, it was kind of interesting. Like, the story was okay. It was better. But we get this narrative throughout all of his stories that all Bruce really wants to do is quit. Apparently, Christopher Nolan doesn't understand that to become Batman, you need OCD on a level the rest of us can't even imagine. The idea that he spends all these movies trying to find a way out and quitting is garbage. Shows a fundamental lack of understanding of the character. And so he lost me. I was not in for the... And by the way, and he ruined Bane. Bane is a great character, and he is trash in that movie. <laughs> like, just awful. Well, and you saw that in the teaser when they introduced him. And it, by the way, they used to go, do I even want to go see this? I mean, they're not even coming close to Bane. Not even close. And, and his background story was kind of, uh, yes, but no. <laughs> I'm... 
like I, I like Affleck a lot in a modern live action universe. I would love to see Affleck do it, but I, I'm much more interested in getting better writers. And if I can't have better writers, give me Adam West. Yeah. All day mm -hmm. long. Family guy, Adam West. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay. So I'm just going to ask because we're into Batman right now, Michael Keaton. I like, I, I, so I will say this, um, long before my daughter was born, um, I, somewhere in all my boxes, and I think Maddie might've seen it once, I have, and it says right on it, like issued from, from the premiere, ticket one for Batman. Number one, because I was in line for days. Ticket one for Batman. And I remember going into it going, I can't believe they cast Michael Keaton. And then I remember thinking, holy crap, like he physically, he didn't transform himself at all. Not the way Affleck did. Like Affleck got big to be back. Yeah. But the, the Bruce Wayne character, the stoic reservedness was interesting. And when the cowl went on, there was, and, and, and if you remember him in the, in the eighties, he was comedy movie guy. Yeah. Yeah. And there was none of that. Once the cowl went on, his face was, and I was like, so he wouldn't be my pick. I don't love, him. but when I saw him as uh, later in life doing like psycho movies and stuff, I was like, he can do this. Like I told, he convinced me in Batman that he could do some pretty wild stuff. And this was, we were looking at the first majorly funded movie from comics, period. Now there was some crap before that, Fantastic Four um, and that, but this was the big one, big names, all the major characters. You kind of watched it with awe. And, and you know what, as far as I'm concerned, as accuracy goes, it was, it was Batman. It was a good written story. Maybe not the best guys acting in it, but well, the story I, was done well. Yeah, I'm not, a, I'm not a Tim Burton guy at all. I don't think he should ever get to do superhero movies. But um, hey, I just want to say, uh, I, I really like this. So Axel said, hey, I wanted to be Batman so bad when I was younger, I bought my parents tickets to the opera. <laughs> which is... Which, it was Zorro. It was Zorro. I, I was going to correct. It's, it's Zorro, but, but it was a funny line. And so I had to share it because that's pretty brilliant. And he specifically says I bought them tickets in a bad neighborhood, which is hilarious. Oh, that's good. Um, yeah, I, I, think, I think there's lots of things you can nitpick about it. I think we forgive kind of 89 for being 89. Like we just wanted them on the big screen pretty badly. Uh, I, it's interesting that in 89, what we got for the Joker was a really campy take. Like it, it belonged with Adam West. It really did. And yet, um, I think it's remembered as, as one of the classic kind of interpretations of the Joker. So. And you had a soundtrack by Prince. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> every epic. soundtrack, every song. <laughs> So Robert Pattinson is scheduled to be the next Batman. Does anybody have any thoughts on that? If he sparkles, I swear to God, I'm not watching another super. I'm not watching another superhero movie. But you know what? I thought I thought Keaton did a decent job. I didn't really care for for uh, Christian Bale. Val Kilmer was terrible. George Clooney was terrible, in my opinion. I thought Affleck did a decent job. But when I hear Patterson's going to be the next Batman, I have the exact same feeling when I heard Affleck was going to be the next Batman. I was like, seriously, this is going to suck. But I've seen some of some of it in the trailers that they showed of him in the costume, and I'm still feeling. I just I'm not feeling it yet. I don't know. I, I just I don't see this ending well. There's going to be vampires. <laughs> Yeah, I, I think, so there is something I'm interested in, and I think Brendan called it out, right? Like, I'm interested in seeing a younger take on the Bruce Wayne story, which I think we got a little bit of in Batman Begins. Um, but I, but I got to tell you, like, if you told me you wanted to do, uh, like, a really gritty, one of the great Batman comics, a really gritty story, I, I'd take Affleck in a heartbeat. 
I think that mature Bruce Wayne thing he's got going on and the way he beefed up for it, think- cut out all the jokes. I didn't like that they put jokes for Batman in Justice League. It bothered me to no end. But I'd I think take him. Affleck should have done like a Dark Knight Returns. Like he had the look for like the, right. a little bit of age. Clearly, he's feeling it. Right. You saw a bit of that in Justice League, whether you agree with the movie or not. Like you see that he's clearly getting up there, but is still gonna push it because he's OCD because he's Batman. Like I think that was that would have been a great story for Affleck to do. Oh wait, uh, I got to go back to to the Snyder cut one more time. In the extended Snyder Cut, we got reminded that Mira was there and has hard water powers and also chose not to get involved in the war. Oh, fun. I just want to keep pointing out, like, he planted all these heroes and people with powers and didn't use them, even though the world was going to end. That's not good storytelling. Well, and to add to that, the Atlanteans, gee, it seemed to me an Aquaman... There was uh, how many armies of different parts of the world that they all fought together? Um, some of those monsters could have kind of taken out a few pair of demons. Right. Also, while we're at this, if I see one more movie where Aquaman swims in jeans <laughs> and Doc Martens, I'm seriously going to kill somebody. Watch right. out, Jason Stone. I, I, wa- I watched... I watched the Aquaman. I finally watched it because I'm going to be honest. Of all the people in all the comic books, Aquaman's the one I don't get. And it's, and it's just because, like, you're Aquaman. It's great if the fish have a problem. But then what are you doing out here? But whatever. I, I get it. But I like Jason Momoa, but I still thought the movie was terrible. I didn't like it at all. So, so first of all, can I, like, we, he, they really didn't do a good job of, of what that story should have been. Everybody knows that Aquaman is King Arthur's story, right? Yep. Like, it's this great uh, mythological tale narrative baked into the superhero genre, and they just never tell it well. It's so disappointing because it's such a great concept. And they've taken this classic thing that's had legs for, you know, a hundred years at least in terms of uh, modern storytelling. And every time we get an Aquaman story, they just butcher it. Listen, there was a great Aquaman pilot I remain loyal to that never got off the ground. And I'm still bitter about it to this day. As much as mom likes Jason Momoa, that one was better. It had better. That's, uh, if you've never seen it. From the start. Yeah, if you've never seen it, it's Mercy Reef. Um, It was one episode as a pilot that got turned down by the WB, and you can find it to download. And it's it's exactly what you would expect from the WB. (laughs) (laughs) That's great. (laughs) And it's like half naked guys. (laughs) You can watch the pilot and see that that they are kind of gearing towards that like prodigal son, like your 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 mom was a queen. You right. get more of like the actual like roots of the that story to it, and of course there's one pilot, so who knows? Like they could have completely veered off left. But is it just me, or was it hard to take Willem Dafoe as um, as like the loyal uh, uh, Volko after we know that he's also the Green Goblin? Yes, it's hard to take if you've ever watched <laughs> Boondock Saints, right? It's hard to take William the Fuss seriously after seeing him dressed up like a woman. So right. I didn't have a, too much of a problem with him. I thought he did okay. It was William Defoe. They were going for star power. That's what bothered me. Mm. That they were trying to jam a name in. And I think Maddie says it correctly, like when she said it earlier. They they just jam these names in there to get people to buy the movie or go see it. Yeah. But he didn't do that bad in developing the, who the character was. He definitely was not William Defoe. <laughs> yeah, I, I, here's what I would say though. So we get a sense, and I don't, I think it's the Volko character. I don't know if they called him Volko. In Mercy Reef, they cast somebody completely different. And in, in one pilot with only a couple of lines, I felt a heavier weight of the like the crown is going to rest on your head and I'm here to make sure you're re- like, I felt way more of that from, from a few lines from a completely different actor with less name power in a WB throwaway pilot than I did in this. 
and we're not talking, I mean, we're not going down this road today, but that's the whole issue with DC. Yeah. Movies suck. TV, WB, amazing. Stuff that they're doing with the Flash and the Arrow and, uh, you know, like, amazing. Hot take. The Arrow, it's just Batman. Well, fair enough. I that's do agree a, with it's that. one of my topics for us to talk you know, about. Hey, and you know what? It may be Batman, but I couldn't stop it's watching. <laughs> well, so... So let's talk about it then, because obviously we watched it from day one. I was like, oh, they're going to do a superhero show. It'll be Arrow. Uh, I actually didn't know who Stephen Amell was at the time. Now, I obviously know he does really well. Um, and, and we probably weren't more than a season in when I looked up and went, are they going to do anything that's not Batman? Well, even just the character from the get-go was super dark for Oliver Queen. Right. Like, no, none of, like, the play, like, the any of the actual Oliver Queen character, the Goofy or whatever, was, like, written as, like, the mask he wore to hide the really, which is Bruce Wayne's story, right? Like, playing the playboy to hide the intelligence and the dark, like, past and the, from the very beginning, you're like, okay, interesting, like, we'll just change the name, but this is Batman. Well, the first, how many episodes did we go before he built a bat cave? Yeah. But they, that's the whole thing. They couldn't do Batman. They weren't allowed yeah. to do Batman. If they could have done Batman, they would have done Batman. Right. So but if you're going to do Green Arrow, guy, do Green Arrow. Well, right. I, I'm not disagreeing with right. that, but that's why it seems like you're watching Batman. Because Cause you, are? I, you are? You <laughs> are. You are. I just want them to admit it. When I mentioned it to Steven, he did not take that kindly. It was a little cold shoulder. Even you're lucky he didn't punch you in the face. <laughs> well, I just said, I think you make a great Batman. <laughs> Which is a compliment. Yes. <laughs> Maybe they should cast him as a Batman. He was much nicer to Maddie and to my wife than he was to me. Because I, I don't think... <laughs> He was not much nicer to me because I played him a voice recording of his cousin telling him to F off. So he was actually not much nicer to me. Yeah. But I, I think he was projecting. So Maddie met his cousin, Robbie. I don't know if everybody knows. Robbie played Firestorm on the oh. DC Universe. Um, and Maddie met him and, and he was super nice. Not super appropriate because she was 16, <laughs> but super nice to her and, and was great to her. And she said, I'm, I'm going to this big show in New York City and I'm going to get to meet your cousin. I wonder, like, do you want to record a message on my phone that I can play for him? And he was like, oh, for sure I do. And just went, hey, Steven, you fucker. It's like, just went off on him. And I'm, I'm standing beside him and his manager's like, like, I'm so sorry. I'm like, no, nah, it's fine. But I think also Steven was really hung over when, when we met, met him in, that morning and played that for him. So he was just like, like, I can't do this right now, man. Like, he's so much. Like, yeah. But it was super nice. But, um, like, the, the show, they have Oracle, essentially. They never call her that. But, and also, I really wanted her to die. Which off is Batgirl. Seasons in. Um, which is Batgirl. Obviously, Roy Harper is a, like a canon character, yep. but he had a much more like Robin-esque kind of role than Roy Harper. Um, I had Watchdog. All, yeah, and like the villains that they choose, the storylines they choose. They gave us Rachel Ghoul as the core founding yeah. villain story for three he married, seasons. That's he married um, Rachel's daughter, which is Batman. Yeah, and he ends up married <laughs> to an Al Ghoul. Heir to the, the throne, which is Batman. But... And Deathstroke, who was Death more Batman than he was Batman, able. 100%. Yeah. yeah. Um, Brendan has a question for those of us who are actual comic geeks. Uh, is the island backstory true to the character? No. no. So, so I'm going to say yes and no. It is true that Oliver Queen was on an island, that, he, that his ship went down at sea. It is not true that while there he was trained by Deathstroke to become <laughs> Batman. Yeah, no. Um, but but yeah, there is a backstory component where all Liver Queen's uh, um, ship goes down at sea and he gets and he learns to hunt with a bow and arrow while he's on the islands. How he survives. I, I would say no canon. Argument, that's how he learned to use the bow and arrow. I never really had a problem with them sprucing up that story though, because everyone's a sucker for the the weak kind of underdog character goes through the intense training monologue we see through flashbacks right. and then becomes this powerhouse 
that we kind of root for. Like, it's just. Yeah. I, I Listen, don't get me wrong. I enjoyed the Arrow series. We watched it all. There, there were times it wasn't great. There were times it was really great. Um, I, I will um, admit to kind of dropping off a, the more that they made me wait for any decent Black Canary. Um, Fair enough. And it was, it was like a, it was a roller coaster of like, oh, no. Oh, no. And then just you get her for like a second. Arguably, I think their best characterization, you get Laurel actually as Dinah Laurel Lance for like one second. And then she's gone. So actually, the, I think the scene where she died is the one that you said is the most in character. Absolutely. Well, because he has that moment where they realize that like they were clearly meant to be. Um, and I think he calls her Pretty Bird, which is the line from the comics that always sticks out about their partnership. Mm -hmm. And then, and then she go she's gone. But yeah, I stopped. I stopped watching after they they kind of broke up the original team, and then he was auditioning the new guys. Yeah. And I was like, eh, I'm done. I turned. I I just I didn't. Anything. But I will give it credit for where credit is due. I was never a big Flash fan. Till Flash showed up, and then I started watching the Flash right. TV show. Because the Flash TV show, to me, was phenomenal. And again, I don't know anything about the Flash because he was not a character that I really got into. They did a, a better job of telling his origin story, uh, but a poor job of remembering that he was a brilliant scientist. So, arguably, the first season is fantastic. Like, we watched the first season, and I was like, this is like the... The books you read as a kid like this is a uh, beat and like Barry Allen was always like the hopeful one in, in the Justice League right like it was there was always like there's gonna be another way he didn't like for someone with the same sort of tragic kind of things that happened he was always positive which you saw and in the first season he's very much also a forensic scientist like where they'll come up like he obviously works with a brilliant team in the show but he matches their intelligence, right? So he's also suggesting like, well, what if I could use it to do this? Well, what if in theory I could do this? And in the later seasons, he'll be out there and he, it's suddenly like he's dumb when he's out in the field where he's like, well, like without you, I don't know what to do. And it's like, you're a scientist. You don't know how physics works. Like you, you can't apply it in this situation. Like if you're super fast and you're a scientist, you should know that you can run at a wall and you'll probably be fine. Like there's just no application of it anymore. And so the characterization gets a little iffy, but I still think that the core of like Barry Allen, I liked that there was a bit of the story where he has a bit of like that loss of like hope and he gets it back. You see that like he gets a, a, re a renewal of like, okay, like I can't be the negative one. Like there's already Oliver Queen and like Bruce Wayne, but. And they fell into the WB trap though. And I agree with you completely because from the, after the first season, they realize, oh, we've got to have a love story here. We've got to have them boinging each other. And, and that took precedence. And all of a sudden, it literally, his brain turned to mush. I'm in love with this girl, so I can't think. I can't do anything because she's my lightning rod. <laughs> it's a little uh, Peter Petrelli effect, too. Like, they just, they realize, like, if, if we don't have a need for the team to constantly be backing him up, like, it's hard to further the story. And so they, they like take a little bit away from the, the character they build in the first season to draw you in that's always winning and is always, instead of just learning how to write like roadblocks that are actually significant. I love how she threw a hero's reference in there, just like that, no, it, you know, just. No, that's our go-to <laughs> reference. It was her first uh, kind of comic-ish television show when she was uh, at a young age. So it's always our reference and uh, when we went to that big show, we actually got to meet. She, she has photos with them. Uh, I have photos with them. We got to meet uh, Milo, who played Peter Petrelli, and he was the coolest dude. The absolute coolest. So he gets a lot of love in this house. Also, uh, side note, we're petitioning for him to play Namor. If that's ever available, I would like support. If you've never seen the photos online when he has a beard... Beside, like, the classic photo of Namor. He looks dead spot on like Namor. So I'd be down with that. But, I'm, yeah, I'm not into that writing where you come out really strong out of the gate. And then instead of putting more effort into really writing, like, solid villains or storylines, you just kind of start pulling things away from your, your hero to make it easier. I'm just not a fan. 
So we have somebody who has joined masked under the name of Mr. Terrific. So I'm going to promote them in and we'll see how long they last. Cool. Uh-oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Maverick's already getting worried. No, I'm just going to oh. keep taking it away from myself. I'm just going to keep taking it away from myself for a while till uh, I don't, because instead of making you all better, I'm just going to chip away at myself for a little bit until well I'm out. Done. I'm going to sink this podcast like I'm Namor, the Submariner. And there you go. Yeah. You know, I didn't know if we were doing aliases and stuff, and I'm like, hey, what? That's great. You showed up with it, and I was pretty sure I knew who it was, but uh, I thought, you just, oh. You hedged it, though. You hedged it a little bit. You're like, ah. Uh, Okay, quick, rapid fire as you arrive. Uh, Snyder cut, yes or no? Don't care one way or the other. I don't care for Snyder at all, ever. And We're in so, love. Uh, and all I right. have not cared for the DC Universe as far as movies go since, I guess, Batman Begins, maybe. Like, the Batman <laughs> films are fine because they're off on their own thing. Everything else I have not cared for. They haven't made a good Superman movie since maybe Superman 3. Um, and, uh, so yeah, I've got no, no time or interest for four hours of going, what is this? Uh, Wonder Woman? Wonder Woman is fine. Yeah. Wonder Woman is fine. Sorry. Wonder Woman is the exception to the rule. And there's so much garbage that you forget that Wonder Woman was even there is the whole thing. You know? Okay. So let me throw this out because I think we generally got a lot of that sense in our conversation. Am I the only one that thinks that, uh, and I, it pains me to say this, Shazam was actually pretty good. Oh, sorry. No, I was Shazam was so good. I forgot about Shazam as well. Shazam was fantastic. I know that you two, up top and down low, are uh, big Zach fans. He is we are. amazing in that movie. He does he does such a natural job of playing an adult, in a child's idea of what an adult is. It's fantastic. And it's funny, but it's also like scary. Are you and, sure he was acting? Uh, I, don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, but uh, no, he is, it, it's, that one is really good. I'm really excited about the next one coming out as well. So when we talked about favorites, that's why I, I was really struggling with that. Like I cry watching Shazam every single time. It's really irrational. My mom's never understood why sad things don't make me cry, but superhero movies do. Um, Cause your dad's the, girl. The hair standing <laughs> up on your arms kind of thing, but it like gets you. But I, I cried watching that because I had no, I dad did and didn't let me in no idea going in when we watched in the theater that I was going to get to see like Mary Marvel. And I loved Mary Marvel growing up. I thought she, and mm -hmm. she's the only one in the family that the, really ever gets to stand apart from him and still yeah. keep the red suit. Like she's the only other one that wears red. Like she was such a big thing. And I, I ball every time I see that scene where you see his crutches fall and there's like the, the moment, right? But. So just out of curiosity, so when, at Endgame, when all the women come and they're going to go, we'll help you, Spider-Man? No? No, that doesn't get me. That okay, actually felt really weird. Okay, just, just checking. I do cry, though, when... I know uh, your dad cried during it, so I was just curious. I cried for the state, state of the world that we thought that that would come off as subtle and meaningful in any way. I, I, uh, no, I cry when he says on your left. That's when I cry. Yes. Every time. When he's like... But because the buildup is that you see that he's willing to... He's tightened the str like he's gonna do it like it's literally just the army. He's still like I guess this is it, right? And then uh, yeah, then I cry like that. That's the goosebumps like the whole theater is like cheering, but no the 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 actually the I think really what they were trying to do was like kind of reference a force and and cover use that as like a reason to push that whole like look we have a t but it was so forced and so un and also I'm like. Why are you all here in one place? There's an entire alien army attacking. And you took the time to be like, we got this. Like, just do something. Like, what are you doing? You are misrepresenting our entire gender right now. Like, Stupid women. But, <laughs> my girl. I, I, um, I think, you know, that was one of the big ones for us. The, the ability to, to sit in the theater and have that moment. And... By the way, this house is team cap all day. And so when everybody else is like, can you believe Tony died? I'm like, I don't care that Tony died. Can you believe Cap was going to fight that whole army by himself? Because that was the best moment in the movie. So back to Shazam. Well done character. It yeah. was 
good, like it was really portrayed the comics well. Yes. Because it's been a long time coming where they did the whole Shazam and what that means. Because people think, well, they go Captain Marvel. Eh, no, Shazam, that acronym means something. You know, right. it's there's there's a reason why that's so important. That oh gods in the uh, in the room, there, it's it stands for something in that. And I just thought to be able to actually move and and portray it that well. Yeah. So, Eric, have you seen Shazam? No. <laughs> I have. Okay, hear me out though. Hear me out. It just got put on HBO Max, and I'm planning on watching it along with. Wonder Woman 84, because I haven't watched that yet either. Don't, don't do it. I know, don't, I know. I don't, don't but listen, but listen, I'm going into it expecting it to be what most sequels are, garbage. No. Oh, it's so much worse than that. Now, She's fine. As, her and villains are not. You don't like oh, her there. Oh, okay. No, she's not fine. No, oh, she went so downhill. I've never read any Wonder Woman comic where she suddenly... D doubts herself like you're oh, talking about enough. a woman who uses the lasso of truth a god given gift to test herself every day like the fact that suddenly she's she's genuinely considering putting her desire to keep a man who died for her above the entire world fair enough it just doesn't the fact that that even the, the movie should have ended when they went well if you give up steve then, then you can say, done, sorry, peace. Like, yep. it, that's the reality of it. Like, they, they twisted that character to suit their story. Well, it's a Wonder Woman story. Like, it should be the other way around. Your story should be built around, you have thousands of years worth of comics, like, sort it out. <laughs> Go up there. Go up. I, uh, I think the one thing I'll say, Eric, is if you're going to watch it, um, if you're going to sit through the pain that it is, and it is, at least stay for the secret ending. Oh, I, I mean, I, ha I have to watch it because I, I just have to. And as far as, as far as Shazam is concerned, I saw the trailer. It looked intriguing. But again, being a child of the 80s, I actually remember watching the terrible TV show. Yep. So when I said there's a Shazam movie coming, I was like, don't care. It's going to be terrible <laughs> because the TV show. You forget everything about that show. It absolutely wipes it out. But I do want to watch it, and I am going to watch it, and I will report back to you after I have watched it. I'm I'm assuming it's pretty good, though. I think it's pretty good, and and, and so Maddie met Zach and and actually got me a, a a present of video. Zach like sending me a personal message, which was really cool when she met him. I uh, um, the one thing that I really like about him is he did his homework for the role. And I don't just mean like, how should I play the role? He knew that people like me think the character's name is Captain Marvel. And he has more than once said, I know that there are old schools out there that really understand this character was originally named Captain Marvel. And if, if I just want you to know, I know that. And I was like, dude, like you gotta, you gotta do, you gotta go back before the seventies. Because when, although they called him Captain Marvel in the book, when DC bought up all of Fawcett's characters, um, the the licenses had lapsed, so they couldn't call name the book Captain Marvel. They had to name it Shazam. They didn't have a choice because um, uh, Marvel had reissued the the license on Captain Marvel that they didn't originally have. Originally, it belonged to Fawcett, so. Very also, weird side note, um, I met him dressed as Mary Marvel before he'd been confirmed as Shazam. Right. And so now looking back, I'm like, super weird coincidence that that just happened to be the case, but. Was, uh, was pretty good. Hey, by the way, again, Valentine, uh, and only the wrestling fans will get this, wants to know if Mr. Terrific is currently impersonating John Cena. <laughs> I thought, it, I swear, I thought it was Naked Man's ghost, but. <laughs> Pretty fantastic. Um, so let's let's transition topics. Um, we got a little bit of the thought uh, in on Wonder Woman 1984. I, I want to change gears. We've done a lot of DC talking. Let's let's talk about Marvel. And 
I want to start by asking uh, for thoughts and opinions on Captain Marvel. Do you want me? I to think she should go first. I hate her so much. She <laughs> makes me so angry. Not in the comics. In the comics, I love her. But I, I do prefer her as Miss Marvel, but I I like the the respect they pay to the original Captain Marvel when she gets the but I hate that movie. I also think the placement of her solo movie in the universe was super forced. I think it was their response to the success of Wonder Woman as like a solo female here. But Marvel doesn't have a Wonder Woman. They don't. I think she's probably one of their closest characters to it if they'd done it properly and in the right time. But they don't have their female characters belong to teens or their counterparts of like a male character like they don't have a wonder woman and so it was a felt so forced and like a super female empowery we just want to make non-comic fans happy and brie larson's take on it is also stupid so she clearly doesn't care which makes me angrier like i think one of the first things i saw after the movie or before the movie was her response to someone saying, I don't like the costume. Like, I don't think it pays enough respect to the comics. Like, I don't. And she responded with, then you must just be some old, stupid white guy who wants to see me with no pants on. And I was like, no, I'm actually a, a young girl who's pissed that you don't. That actually, you had no pants on in the comics. I hope you know that. Like, you probably don't. Like, she just has no understanding. And she goes to their press thing saying, like, I'm the best. And you can see on the other, like, actors' faces that they they just don't... The guy who plays Rhodey outright hates Brie Larson, and it's obvious. Because she comes in with this ego that she, that she does not deserve. Like, the role is unnecessary to their universe, and it's really poorly portrayed based on the comics. You're, you're, you're gonna love you're gonna love my take on it then I, I watched it twice and fell asleep both times so I have not tried a third but if I want to take a nap that's my go-to movie <laughs> my youngest cousin like she I try my best with her she loves it um and I'm I I just want her to love comics in general so I don't obviously throw this rant at her she's like 13 like I'm not gonna be like yeah well your favorite character sucks like <laughs> but I just like that she'll watch Double finger. <laughs> <laughs> but um but when the time comes I am gonna give her the comics and say can you please read these and then watch the movie with me again and tell me that that she does it justice and that it doesn't actually kind of offend you a little bit the way she plays the role and the way that they like show me one male character in that movie who is respected or a decent human being. And if you don't have good male characters in your story, it doesn't matter how strong you are as a female. It just doesn't. If there's no counterpart, it doesn't make you look any better. It, it makes no sense. It's not smart writing. It, it For what they were trying to do, it doesn't even make sense. It's interesting. Um, I yeah. have a question. I have a question. I just have... How is your daughter not have a wrestler in FedEx? Exactly. <laughs> she doesn't watch wrestling. <laughs> we, well, then put her in front of a TV because she's got more common sense than some of the people we have right now. You know, Maddie, be Wonder Woman. We'll accept it. Trust I'll, me. I'll, yes. <laughs> be Wonder Woman. Yeah. Although I'll have to admit, as a dad, Stay the hell away from Federation X. Yeah. <laughs> strong strong if you advice. Come anywhere near it, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> uh, so I think the the challenge for me, and, and I see Axe kind of making a comment about it as well. Like, did anybody, she had her, so they set her up, right? They bring her in for, um, for, for the Captain Marvel movie so that they can have their big moment in Endgame right? Um, the big moment in Endgame being, of course, that moment where she arrives and destroys uh, the, the warship. Anybody other than Rocket Raccoon excited at her arrival? No. Anybody other than Rocket Raccoon go, if she could do that, imagine what Thor could have done. Come on. She, like, 
I I will say that I expected her to piss me off a lot more in Endgame than she actually did. So I was like, all right, if you showed up, she showed up for like five seconds, did her job, and then so fine. But um, I don't think she was necessary. She wasn't even the most powerful female in that movie. And the powers they gave her, the, the her origin story is not accurate. Right. No. No. no, no. At all. And that was why, for me, watching Captain Marvel, it wasn't about her. I was watching for the secondary characters. I hated Carol Rambo. Like, they took a really good, in the yeah. comics, a fantastic character and just blew her off. Yeah. Um, but the, the, um, the uh, Kree were done really well. The scroll were done. I'm sorry, really not bad. sorry. The scroll. That's what I meant to say. The scroll were done really well, and they and they set things up for a great civil war coming up. Like I, you like the idea that we're supposed to feel sympathetic for the scrolls. Like they're they're the bad no. guys throughout the Marvel universe. No, but but the way they in, but the way they did them. And yeah, it, like the, it, the it was done yeah, well. the shape shifting yeah. and all that kind of stuff was great. And the best character in the movie was the cat. It was perfect. It was the comic cat it threw up the. <laughs> the <laughs> and I love the fact that that's how uh, Fury lost his eye. I mean, not comic, but I love the fact that they did it that way. <laughs> I uh, I did not need Captain Marvel to tell me you can't judge a book by its cover, Jeff. I can judge scrolls as an infiltrating evil race just fine. Thank you. Scrolls are Nazis. Scrolls. Are right. Nazis. That was actually the wit twist. Hi, everyone. I just decided to barge back in. That was actually the twist I back. was waiting for all film that never came was for the scrolls to be the evil ones. And they're like, no, we're really good. I'm like, right. And then they're like, no, we actually are. I'm like, what are you doing? Right. I haven't been that mad at a retcon of something I believe to be true that's written down since episode two, where they cut the wrong arm off of Anakin Skywalker based on the Timothy Zahn trilogy. And I went, I sat the rest of the movie going. <laughs> Is nobody bothered by this? Exactly. Did, did, no one, did no one read these books that came out? And so, yeah. That's and then, double spoilers. Just, sorry for anyone who hasn't seen the end of WandaVision yet. Spoilers. <laughs> when the scroll shows up at the end, I'm like, oh, it's an ambush. And I'm like, oh, wait, that's right. The scrolls are good in the TV one. Yeah. To their defense, to the defense, and it's like they were a sub group. To the they were hiding the from the scrolls. Scroll. There are no good Nazis, sir. They're called Nazis. Fair enough. <laughs> oh, oh, hold on. What if they were talent Nazis? Still Nazis, sir. Still oh, Nazis. You're not wrong. <laughs> um, so I I think that the the challenge I have is that. I, I think Maddie nailed it when she said the only reason we got a Captain Marvel movie is because Wonder Woman blew the socks off of everybody. Yeah. Probably. Yep. And she got shoehorned into the Marvel Universe and then we got force fed as fans and told what we should think about her. And she was doomed from the second that was their plan. Mm -hmm. And also, I don't mind, like, I, I don't care that you chose to, like, obviously, Carol Danvers is the character. I'm not upset about that. But did you have to disrespect Marvell? Exactly. That's my point. Like, yes. And Quasar, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, where's Quasar, my friends? I love that you went there. I love it. I'm sorry. He's like, got the I don't know what you guys are talking cape. about. Now. He took care of baby ego or baby I mean, exactly, right? Yeah. Where's love for Wendell, huh? I right, mean, Wendell Vaughn. Exactly. That's 90s. That's as 90s as he can get. His Wendell Vaughn is Quasar. 90s. Oh, that's so good. Um, okay, so let's let's talk a little bit before we get into kind of like some of our favorites and things we really like. We're we're starting to get the serious teases for some future stuff, and we've seen the first tease for probably 2024, maybe 2025, that we're going to get the first uh, of the movies that come from the Fox acquisition. Right, we've seen the tease for Fantastic Four. So I think the big question, because we didn't see a tease, is how do the X-Men arrive in this universe? Like this is fully speculative, but obviously we're all dying for like 
X-Men versus Avengers or like, but at some point we've got to do this. We've got to solve it. We can't Zack Snyder it and just act like they were around and didn't care that the world was going to end. So how do we get the X-Men into this world? How do we get Deadpool running around with Captain America without explaining that Deadpool wasn't on a beach, not giving a damn that the world was getting destroyed? I mean, Deadpool could very well be your answer. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, he's the easiest, like, kind of, like, laziest way to just write, like, a he knew, uh, he breaks the fourth wall. He's known the whole time that there's two different network uh, companies and that they just didn't have the rights, but now they're here. Like, I think it would be lazy. Like, I don't know, I'd love it. But I, I'm not saying they're not going to do it. I want to see the Eternals before I can really answer that question because it's the same thing that's coming up with them. Where the hell were they when the when the Earth was being destroyed? Moon. Well, there's a lot of memes about that circulating. And, yeah, and they're going to answer it. They are going to answer it. And I'm just curious of which direction they're going to take. Do you think that they're going to go, I mean, that's a possible out. That's an out that a lot of people would go, that's not how it works. But it's a possible out that somewhere along the Eternals, they could release the, I don't know how it's pronounced, Terrigen, Terragon, yeah. Mist. Terrigen, Mist. Yeah. That could cause the mutations because that actually was, I want to say, one of the beefs in X-Men. The X-Men one were... They fought against the Inhumans, uh, right. but the idea that they would release that and that would cause a mutation, and all you have to do is shoehorn like Hank McCoy into the Avengers real quick, and then yeah. be like, oh, and now he's also blue. Um, and so you could very easily fit him, and I'm trying to think of some other like kind of representative. I mean, you could technically shove Aurora into Black Panther two or three. I will just wanted. be excited but still vaguely upset that i'll never see her as queen of wakanda that's yeah. it um so a couple of things that that topic certainly sparked some some questions and comments um and one of them you know a couple of people threw it out pretty quickly because you know doctor strange 2 is coming is is the multiverse the answer and is there something going to happen in one of the stories where the multiverse comes together I saw a lot of people speculating before WandaVision dropped that she was going to accidentally create the multiverse, mm -hmm. which if you read the comics is in theory something that Wanda has you the ability do. to do. Yeah, and I wondered if they were going to like secret ending kind of Easter egg, like if she was still going to be off the rails enough to, or even just like they'd resolved her mental instability, but you kind of see at the end a little bit of like the residual, she did something but I don't... Wait see till the yeah. end of Loki. Wait till the end of Loki. I think the whole thing with Loki trying to repair the, the multiverse, to repair the time stream, I think it's going to end with Wanda doing something, poof, and all of a sudden now we got Spider-Man. And that's the first movie after that. I mm -hmm. wonder... Uh, so I, I probably this is a shot in the dark. By the way, uh, Brendan pulls out a couple of really good points. So one of the things Brendan pulls out is, hey, I saw some people talking about the fact that we're going to find out that Professor X suppressed everybody's knowledge of mutants. I think that's lazy because it doesn't explain why they sat on the sidelines <laughs> while the world was going to hell. Um, and I think the other thing he threw out is, hey, let's not forget that when they did, the, when Marvel did the Inhumans, they had pulled all the X-Men comics for uh, a little while. Like they were mm -hmm. intentionally devaluing the X-Men. The X-Men. That was an intentional move by Marvel at the time when they were in negotiations with, um, with Fox. So I, I wonder, um, so Aaron just threw out exactly what I was gonna say, Aaron, which is, I was gonna say, if, if you remember the great comic book story where the Scarlet Witch and her madness says, no more mutants, I wonder if they'll use the inverse where she's the one that says- More mutants. Where are the mutants? Kind of sucks yeah. for Hope Summer. She's not going to get her moment, but okay. Right. Yeah, we love the Hope Summer story. That's right. But I think that would be an interesting. Now, Mav's a big X Men fan. Matt, do you have like as a as a guy who was like that's the one I read. I liked. I I, I, I like the movies. Do you have a? I hope they do it this way. Nope. <laughs> I don't. I really don't because I don't. I don't know how. I, I don't know how you do it. I just I don't I, I mean I, the, the, to me uh, what what uh, 
you know, Crow was suggesting, uh, Brendan, um, to, to me, that seemed like a likely candidate right off the bat. And again, that's kind of lazy. That's just, I, I don't know how you do it at this point. I, I don't have a, I don't have a, oh, I hope they do it this way scenario. I got but, it. But when it comes to the X-Men movies, I have a bad taste left in my mouth from that experience, especially. And I'm not talking about the, the reboot with the younger version. I'm talking about the third X-Men movie. Oh, dark. Uh, sorry. It was their attempt at the Phoenix story. It was exactly. really bad. Oh, it was terrible. Well, you exactly. talk about eviscerating something. Just I, I, I don't know. I don't know how they do it. I'm interested to see what they come up with, but I have no idea. All right, Mano. Fantastic Four, number one, gangbusters. Fantastic Four, two, they fight against Namor. Namor, Namor, one, cut scene at the end. He's swimming underwater because he's a fish man. He comes across a giant island that's eyes open because it's a living island. Krakoa. And it rises up from the sea. It's Krakoa, the living island. And it's been trapping all the X-Men inside of it all of those years. Poof, the X-Men are all out there now. What did we miss? Ta -da! I would like to propose that he presents it just like that to Marvel. There you go. So just, <laughs> there you go. You all get you all get executive producer credits. So you're all going to be rich. There Maybe American go. dollars. I'm sorry, but you'll all be rich. It, they spend the same. Oh, awesome! Okay, cool, very cool. Um, I I think so. First of all, I was not against the idea that they could have used um, Secret Wars as yeah. a way like the scroll invasion yeah as a way to explain what happened like if the scrolls had been taking mutants and replacing them but not using power like just replacing them because mm -hmm. they wanted to study mutants because that's what was going on on earth that was special and so they all were <laughs> gone like <clears throat> the, then you could have done the whole hey we figure out that the the scrolls are here then we got to figure out they're really the bad guys then we got to figure out who they took and then you get that opportunity to recast characters mm -hmm. right so you can recast you can do and you can bring mutants in. I thought that was a possibility for a while i thought there was a possibility they would tie it to the snap somehow i, I, I couldn't think... figure that out but they obviously didn't do that quickly enough i um, think without introducing some sort of multiverse they've made a lot of rough spots for themselves though i scarlet witch is a mutant quicksilver right. is a mutant, and they've introduced two quicksilvers like the, but he's a mutant in one and an inhuman in the other and so i think without in like how do you smooth over some of those well that doesn't really make line up or make sense but he's a, she's she is a mutant to us but she's never called a mutant she's an she's called a a miracle i think not a, a miracle or special or something something like and let me just because say she was created even, in the laboratory well with the, with the we don't know that that's the case yeah, supposedly. You know what I also wonder, too, is when they're tying all this together, like, they have a couple shows, like, Gifted, and, like, where do those fall in there? They get thrown away. Yeah. They're it's part of the old television universe that they don't care about. Mm -hmm. Which yeah. kind of sucks. I kind of like that show. Um, do that with the first three movies, too. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think they will, right? Uh, Your question also becomes one of the other big problems, of course, with introducing the X-Men at any point is that it's very difficult to introduce the X-Men without introducing Magneto. And Magneto is problematic because Magneto is so directly tied to World War II as his main driver that one, the further you get out, the older and older he becomes technically. But then two, where has Magneto been for X amount of time? If nothing else, like mutants, schmutants, where has Magneto been this entire time I that think he hasn't been doing something? more and more that's becoming the problem with a lot of stories like where has this character been where have mm -hmm. they gone like what why were they doing even justice league that they wrote that like diana gets there and then like is suddenly like i'm actually just gonna chill for like a hundred years like they're just where do they go like what because it's not convenient for this other story you're telling they're suddenly just gonna be hiding i don't know right. at least with captain marvel they sent her way 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 out and she said, has like they literally say like, okay, like, so you've been here since the seventies because we shoehorned you into the timeline way too late in the game. Where have you been? I think she says something like, if, if you're not the only like planet in the universe or something. Like I don't know. Oh, yeah, right at, right at the beginning they don't of the movie where they're having the peanut butter sandwich. <laughs> yeah. He's like, uh, I remember that. Yeah. Like, 
there are other planets and they don't have you guys basically and it's like right but like we do have these guys so why are you here like you've been gone for x amount of we don't need you and also to be clear those other planets are ruled by the kree empire you're not tight with the kree and um hey it's not just some planet it's your planet how come you haven't been, like come on get out of here yeah so my thought on the x-men in, coming in is I, I have a bad feeling they're gonna throw out the entire concept of the x-men as we know them and what we're going to see as we're seeing the, the, the heroes of the Avengers dying off or retiring, we're going to see the new, the new heroes come up. And amongst those new heroes are going to be the mutants. And we're going oh, to I think them. you're going to get the X-Men. I don't think they're throwing I, that brand away. I, I think we'll see the X-Men come, but I don't think it's going to be... I think it's going to be another generation. It's almost going to be like the 1960s redone you know, like uh, Amazing X-Men number one, you know, where you see the new generation of X-Men. I don't, I, I would bet money against that. In fact, I will if you want to. I think no, you'll I get like the new Avengers. Oh, like, absolutely. And you're seeing that. Kate but, Bishop is yeah. coming. Um, you got Monica Rambeau and, and Stature is there. Spider -Man I mean, and... yeah. I, I think I think and something that we haven't discussed yet, and, and I think this is inherent in all types of different movies, when it when it comes to telling a story that's based off of something that's well known so we're talking about comics or or video games or a book okay like for instance and i'm going to transition out of comics for just a second just to use mm -hmm. this as a point but people who liked the game resident evil and then the resident evil movie comes out and the biggest complaint you hear from everybody it, well, it was nothing like the game it, it's a horror movie if it was like the game where are you going to get scared? They had to make changes. So I think in the comic book realm, what we deal with is that you're trying to service the comic book fan, but you're also trying to reel in the people who don't read comics. Mm -hmm. So they so they make these changes. Now, for instance, and, and I'm, I am a big X-Men fan, but I will admit to the fact that I have dropped off reading it for some time. Now, having said that... All 72 titles? You don't read any of them? Right. Prior, prior to, prior to, um, it, it, like, yeah, I don't, I don't make frequent trips to a comic book shop or anything like that. It's just, you know, but I don't recall, and I could be wrong here. I could be wrong here. But when I watched the third X-Men movie, I'm sitting here watching this and I'm going, yeah, I don't remember Magneto losing his powers. I, I don't remember, I don't remember, uh, oh my God, my brain just went fucking blank. What's her damn name? The blue chick. Somebody Mystique. help me out. Mystique. Mystique, thank you. I don't remember Mystique losing her powers. I don't remember any of these things. I don't remember the Phoenix. Well, I think the, the, the problem with the writing there is that they're not powers. They're in their, it's your genes. Yeah. Like, how are and, you fundamentally losing a mutation in your, your gene? Yeah, so when you're watching this and you know these things, you're going, this is garbage. But to Joe Average, who does it, for instance, I'm not a big Marvel guy when it comes to the Avengers, Captain America, stuff like that. So when I watch this stuff, I'm like, that's cool because I don't know any better because then I'm Joe Average. But when I'm watching X-Men, I can nitpick the, the shit out of it and be like, but I have to remember that they're also writing that for not just the comic fans. So what winds up mm -hmm. happening is you have the comic fans who are getting pissed off, but you have the average person who doesn't know any better going, oh, that, I mean, because let's be honest, when when you have Wolverine coming up to Dark Phoenix and, and you have that moment where she comes back and she's Jean and he stabs her, that's an emotional moment. I hated the whole fucking movie. So... Hey, I think you're Star Wars touching one, on Star Wars two, Star Wars three. Yeah, so you're <laughs> touching on something that that I think, like I have a, I've had a strong opinion about it for 25 years, which mm -hmm. is this: the only reason you want to make the movie is because of me. They're not making it for you, because I made it popular enough that they think they can make you interested in it. I'm the one who matters in this equation. Right. If I like the movie, I'll tell you to see it. If yes. I tell you it's shit, the odds that you watch it go downhill, they don't need to please you. They need to please me. There have been, art, you can Google them, articles written all over the place out of Hollywood going like, the mystery of trying to solve for fan, there's no mystery. 
stop thinking you can write a better story than the one that made me care about the characters and we won't have any more problems. Exactly. A friend of mine once said, we were watching, I feel like we were maybe watching Road to Perdition, which I hadn't realized was a comic book movie at the time. Yeah. Um, but we were talking about something and he's like, I don't understand it. You literally have the storyboards, like you have the storyboards right. handed to you. You Correct. can literally just go, here are three stacks of trades, do this one and you will make the money. You don't have to worry about how to shoot or anything. It's this. Do this, and there's your movie. And, but here's the thing. I, like, I'll concede, largely, Marvel didn't do that, and we liked their movies. They got the character right, mm -hmm. and they generally told good stories. Mm -hmm. DC's well, gotten the character wrong and written bad stories, and that is an affront in, in the face of, like, are there more good stories out there than Batman has? Because I don't think there are, and I haven't seen a one of them make an appearance in a live action film yet. Yeah. I think the uh, the argument there is characterization is more important because you're talking about a genre where tomorrow someone could write a comic book that makes that canon now. Right. Like there's always new stories. Oh, absolutely. And some of them you like and some of them you don't, but you accept that they were written by the authors. So when they're turned into movies, it happened in the comics. But as long as the characterization is right, you at least have a leg to stand on. Like mm -hmm. it's at least not completely. Right. Like yeah. I'm watching Man of Steel going, sick alien movie. It's not a Superman movie. It's just not. Even if the story was great, you, you, you got to call it something else. And we're not mentioning, as far as I'm concerned, the best DC adaption to a movie out there. Well, and, we're gonna and, we're gonna and hear if, that. And if you get you look at it for panel for panel, like Mano was saying, they did it perfectly. We're gonna get to that because we're gonna right. talk about top five lists of of who's done what. Um, but before we get to that, is there? a character that hasn't shown up for you yet that like as a superhero person you're just like I, that's the one i need hmm. for a tv uh, they could do it as a tv series i'm just trying to think of ones that because uh, i used to really like daredevil but that's when daredevil was kind of in that Frank Miller space before everyone decided to make him super grim dark. Right. Um, I like Daredevil, a slightly more serious uh, Spider-Man, but that's as far as it goes. Um, but, so I'm not gonna see him, but I was just thinking it could be a good Disney miniseries if you did, um, or they tend to be called the Weapon X program. Cause I'm like, I was a bit, I always enjoyed Maverick, uh, the comic book character. And I liked his power set and him being a spy and kind of a mercenary is a cool story. And I think you could tell a story around those people and uh, that could be a very interesting story. You can have your Wolverine tie-in if you need to or Sabretooth or Deadpool because they all tie into it. Right. Um, but you can have your kind of more ground level, minimal special effect, minimal power sort of story that you can tell yeah. in the vein of, in a way, uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Interesting. Interesting. I, <laughs> this is goofy, but it's just me as the younger version of me appreciated this character so much i just want to see a good x-men movie with gambit in it because for christ's sakes if you're gonna put fucking jubilee mm -hmm. in a fucking movie how come i can't get one good gambit the most popular new x-men in like 20 years from like I just want a good Gambit. I'm not asking for a Gambit movie. Give me a good X-Men movie with Gambit in it. That's what I want. Yeah. yeah. Are we talking like uh, just DC Marvel? No, I, I think I think you're welcome to go outside that realm if you'd like. Interesting. I read a lot of cross-gen and I, none of it's ever been live action. By the way, it's all owned by Marvel. Exactly. <laughs> so where is it? Like, I don't know. It's a great question. Fantastic stories. And like, not just mainstream superhero stories. Right. Which, for the time that it was written, wasn't as big of, as a, of a thing. But like, Mystic, I loved Mystic. I, I love that she didn't want it, ended up with it, and is just kind of this chaotic, I don't, like, I don't know what to do with this the whole time. It was really well written. Um, 
well, sigil scion yeah yeah their characters are really strong like and in like unique like not just like super powered characters you know who was involved in planning that whole universe is it wade mark wade yeah that makes sense um chris any simon thoughts? williams what's that simon williams wonder man yep i i related to him i mean i loved the west coast avengers and west coast Avengers number 14 was the first comic I ever bought at 7-Eleven. And wow. I was absolutely hooked from that point on. And he was just, I always wanted to be an actor. I want, like, I mean, I, I teach it now. I've um, been on stage. But yeah, just the fact that he was that cheesy Hollywood actor and his backstory just, yeah, he's been one of my favorites. That could be a great kind of lighthearted series or film. Absolutely. Where it's I have juvenile beef with Wonder Man. Absolutely no basis for it whatsoever. I was just a diehard Wonder Woman fan, and I felt oh. like he was a bit of a ripoff. <laughs> That's all right. I was correct. Oh, he had time. jets on his, his belt. It wasn't the same. <laughs> hey, what, what what Axel Hendricks said to you, Lego Batman. We need more Lego Batman movies, because Will Arnett is awesome. It's like... Yeah. <laughs> I, and I, I see Axel saying Dazzler is a movie he could get behind. I, I don't. Oh, your dad can take you to it. <laughs> hey, the Dazzler that they introduced in Dark, uh, not Dark Phoenix. Yeah, Dark Phoenix, like the last X Men movie. The Dazzler they kind of had there for about five minutes was not bad. Like it was an. But the movie portrayal. was. Well, the movie was terrible. I never saw it. On but, purpose. but she was good like it was an actually who she was because yeah. she had the makeup she had the 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 outfit and the dazzling power i thought hey that's impressive so like i have a host of things i'd like to see um and a lot of them would like just people would be like i don't even know who you're talking about but some of them we're actually going to get to see um they, they've already been scripted and done so uh, it's a it's a you know in major character ones that's a difficult one for me it's hard for me to not want to see uh planetary uh warren ellis's planetary is one of the coolest things ever written and allows them to tell stories that are uh so you know spy superhero like horror the whole genre mashup is just fantastic in it uh, and the idea that the fantastic four would come back from space with their powers and secretly take over the world and be the bad guys is the coolest thing ever so uh, that that's got to be pretty high on my list but right now i'm super jazzed for getting to see somebody do the fantastic four correctly i've waited a long time for that you know what i think actually was weirdly thinking about it as you said planetary has nothing to do with it um that would do well as a show right now is uh fables oh. fables would be great brilliant. series yeah great and i think you series. you there's already been kind of evidence of similar sort of based on like fairy tale shows that have done really well mm -hmm. with comic fans and, and people who aren't comic fans i think fables would fall in really well yeah. absolutely absolutely well we we got i mean if you haven't seen it yet we got the first season of invincible it's exactly like the comic book it's fantastic um yep. we are going to get uh why the last man this year mm -hmm. um and if it's anything like the comic season will be of the boys which is will which is supposed this season should bring out some of its biggest storylines yeah we'll we'll see how that goes i and and we got Jupiter's legacy and it's dead already. We won't see any more of it. But it was too long. The, the, the origin story was so boring. It, it, they just blew it. Like you just, the way they filmed it was I terrible. didn't hate it. You didn't hate it? Oh, no. I just- I'm a pace. First of all, I don't think you can judge whether a TV show is gonna land in eight episodes. So oh. I, think, I think that's just, if you're pulling the trigger at eight episodes, you weren't committed to begin with. Yeah. I could I can think of two off the top of my head I would like to see made into like a live action TV series and I'm going to go outside 
the normal bounds of what we consider comic book superheroes because these aren't really superheroes but they are comics and i'm not big into this before i say this my son actually got me to watch these two different shows and i don't know if you guys are familiar with the japanese anime of death note and a, a, an attack on titan yep attack on titan death note has got to be one of the best things I've ever uh, I've ever witnessed. Just I love the I love the animated series. My son has the I, I think they're called them what do they call magna oh, magnas whatever they call them, I don't know. He's let me he's let me look at those. Um, Attack on Titan. He he got me to sit down and watch the first episode of that. And when I saw a giant person eating another person, I was hooked. And I mean, again, those are outside the realm of what we can typically obviously not superheroes, but it's still comics. Yeah. And I would love to see, because they did try a, a live-action Death Note movie, which was terrible. It was absolutely terrible. So, before great, great inputs. Before we hit top fives, um, Rick asked, do you think they'll do Kingdom Come? Uh, or something like it with a large crossover. So, I just want to say this. If they half-assed Kingdom Come the way they half-assed Crisis, I will be done with everything DC puts on film forever. Uh, Kingdom Come is one of the great comic book stories of all time. Mark mm -hmm. Wade uh, wrote an opus when he wrote it, mm -hmm. and it deserves... I, I'd rather see it done animated and right than live action and wrong. Yeah. Now, you had a top five comic book movies we want to see. Yeah. And we were kind of touching on, on that. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to kick that off if you don't mind. I don't mind at all. Okay, while we're on the topic. So Wait, before five, you go there, let okay, me yep. let me jump. Uh, Brendan just commented he felt like the two hundred million dollars that Netflix put into Jupiter's Legacy was a lot of commitment. I don't care how much money they spent um, because they gave us eight episodes. They left us on a cliffhanger, and then they pulled the plug. That's, they should have the known. That, Why spend two hundred million to just then pull the if plug? If you eight? don't believe in it, don't spend it. And if you believe in it. Don't give up because the initial reaction isn't all there. Mm -hmm. but, like, I, I just, I'm done with these TV stations that, that are like, well, we got eight episodes in, we gave you enough, and we're not going to give you any closure. Well, they're, right. they're throwing everything against the wall to see what sticks. That's right. all it is. Tons of great series uh, failed in their first season, but because they were in a different era where there wasn't automatically seven pilots waiting for their time slot, mm -hmm. They got a second season and then ended up running 12, 13, 14, 15 seasons. The Office. Right. Seinfeld, so, Cheers, The Office. All right. three of them would have been dead on arrival. So I'm just, I'm, 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 I don't care that they sunk 200 million in. I care that they didn't give it enough time to find its legs. You can't, and, and we, and, and unfortunately, I've been, I've been a, I've been a Netflix subscriber since day one. And, and I'm going to tell you, you can't, you can't count on Netflix for anything anymore right. because Netflix's main, driving forces how many people we get to subscribe because i can tell you right now there are series on netflix that i watched that i like and i've seen the same heading on it now for almost two years season two coming soon when <laughs> when i die uh, you know i mean i'm not getting any younger people i need you to turn this shit out so i can watch these shows and they and they can't I, I i i watched jessica jones i didn't know who jessica jones was i watched i watched the first season i enjoyed it I didn't really know much about Luke Cage. I watched part of that. I enjoyed that too. And then suddenly, gone. Just gone. No no closure, no nothing. Because Marvel wanted awesome. their characters back. But even then, they haven't made an effort on Disney Plus to do anything with them, as far as I know. No, no they haven't. No, no, they're not going to. No, they didn't want those series. They wanted their characters back. They don't yeah. want anybody else to have license to their characters. And nope. I understand that, but then use them. It almost becomes, to tie back to, it almost becomes a Captain Marvel thing where they're like, look, we can't have anyone else called Captain Marvel. So just every couple of years, I mean, now it works because they actually have a very popular series. But every like five, six years, they'd be like, here's a new Captain Marvel, just so no one else can call a character Captain Marvel anymore. It's Suck it, Billy. The uh, the funny thing is that DC can't call him Captain Marvel. It's DC's fault because they sued Fawcett into bankruptcy. <laughs> like, yep, exactly. Um, I I was just gonna say, like, you know, if we're if we're gonna talk about that, we're gonna we're kind of looking at the way they're 
they're dealing with these things. Like they, they bring them in house, they they protect the brand. So they were di they were intentionally difficult to deal with, so mm -hmm. that so that Netflix are like we're not going to review renew this. It looked like Netflix was making the decision. I don't think any of us should believe that. I think that was Mar uh, Marvel and D Disney behind the scenes making it Absolutely. impossible for them to agree. Um, and then as we leave that topic and go to Chris, who's going to get us jumped off, I just want to say this because I think I'm one of the few people in the world. I don't think Iron Fist was as bad as people think Iron Fist was. And I think they ended the second season so well and if you don't know the comics, you don't know what you missed out on because Ed Brubaker's run on Iron Fist is the stuff a legend. And that's the story they were hinting at in the closing moments of season two. And if you'd gotten that, forget all the rest of them. That's the series you'd be talking about. Yeah. Anyways, that was just my, my hot take on it. I know if Jordan was here, he'd be raging because he totally disagrees with me. All right, all right Chris, so, kick us off. Top five comic book movies I want to see. Number five, Elseworlds. I love, love, love the alternative realities. Yep. I, I thought Elseworlds was so well done, and I'd love to see stuff like that. Uh, number four for me was a, it's a, a good GI Joe movie. I I started collecting GI Joe with number two, number one, and never stopped. And the stuff that they have done is crap. Got a number one around you, here somewhere. Do you go Snake Eyes heavy on that? Do you make Snake Eyes the lead like you did in the comics and build a thing around him, or what do you no, do? No, for me, I want to see them build around the Joe team. Experts in every field brought together. Now, later on in the comics, it started getting ridiculous because they brought, like, everybody in. But, you know, you're talking issue 13 and up. Uh, when they started bringing in, uh, you know, an Arctic expert, the doctor, the the gung ho, the marine, you know, the you need a doctor. I don't understand who, who you're sending off to war if you don't include a doctor, sir. That's, well, no, but I mean, they, but all these movies, they don't have these guys, you know, and yeah, they're just they're not getting the idea. These are like they had one guy from every field that was an expert, not a bunch of. Green shirts. I, I really despise green shirts. I just can't stand them. Uh, number three, John Bryan's Next Men. I don't know if anybody read that. All three comics. them all. Series. Yep. Awesome, awesome, awesome series. Hold on. We're them. gonna we're gonna knowledge check Chris now. What's the name of the comic that actually launched that series? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. So, it was a graphic novel called Twenty One Twelve. And it takes place in the future with time travel that sends them back to form the creation of the next men. Okay. I never read the graphic novel. I'll have to get that now. You, you got to find it because it, it really tees the whole and frames okay. the whole thing. Okay. For me, number two, Old Man Logan. Not Wolverine, <laughs> the, the one that the last one they did, but Old Man Logan. It Where wanted they... so badly for us to think it was Old Man Logan. And it, it wasn't Old Man. Yeah. I mean, where was the, the the maestro, not the maestro Hulk, but the, uh, yeah. the you know, and the, and the whole hillbilly family, <laughs> you know? I gotcha. um, and for me, again, a good Suicide Squad. Could be coming. It could be coming. I'm not going to hold my breath, but it could be. Could be coming. All right. Anybody want to follow that? I, I, I can follow it because my list is super short because I don't. I don't read a lot of comics. Uh -oh. I already mentioned it once. Yeah. I want a good X-Men movie with Gambit in it, number one. <laughs> number two, I want a good X-Men trilogy. Not that shit you put out. I mean, I like the first one. The second one was mad. The third one was fucking terrible. I, I want a good trilogy. Um, maybe a good Constantine movie. I like I like horror comics because I'm a huge Walking Dead fan. I really like Blade, um, but yeah, I'd like to see a better Constantine movie at least, and that's probably all you're gonna get out of me because like half the stuff that 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 Chris mentioned, I have no idea what any of that is. So. I'm the one guy here who's a comic movie fan, not a comic book guy. So right, Maddie, got any thoughts? Um, 
maybe a decent crisis movie I would done not be against well. That. Um, I'm since '84. I'm really itching to see her kill Maxwell Lord. I heard think, Maxwell Lord. <laughs> yeah, if you're gonna take her character in a different direction, at least make it canon and make it like that. I don't know. Um, I always thought Blackest Night would be a, awesome to see on a big screen. Once we started getting into like Guardians of the Galaxy and like space movies, superheroes, I just I constantly come back to it. Um, it's obviously really heavy. Both of them are heavy mm -hmm. movies to do. You have to establish a lot of things first. So I'm understanding I'm probably never going to get it. Right. Uh, hmm, I'm trying to think of... We have so much like mainstream content. I'm trying to think of more of like the independent or in between kind of stories. I'm excited for Invincible. That was always my go-to. But I did always maintain it would be a better show. Um, I'm just trying to think of what. Oh, we got to see Earthworm Jim. <laughs> it was I good. can live without that. <laughs> oh, come on. The, co the cartoon was good. <laughs> um, I actually, real quick, I actually just thought of two other ones actually off the top of my head. And again, not being familiar with the comic watching the movies that were made and thinking these would be really good if their stories didn't suck so much. I would like to see another version of Daredevil and Elektra. Yeah. Maybe the death of Elektra. But like done properly. I just, I like, I, I, I can't say that I totally like the whole movie of Elektra. I like the concept of who she is. I, again, not reading very much of, of anything having to do with her or Daredevil. And I, I liked what I saw I, I like the, the what the character I, I think is supposed to be based on what I saw, but I didn't like the movies of either one of those. And I would I'm intrigued by those characters, and I would like to see better movies. So while people are thinking, I'm going to throw a couple things out. So first, uh, Brennan Branch is throwing out that he would like to see a good Geoff Johns adaptation, um, and so I'm curious, Brennan. What specifically you mean? Because he's written a lot of stuff, and he's written some really good stuff. I'm wondering uh, if there's a specific story you're thinking of when you're throwing that out. Um, and then I see Axel coming in hot with a great take. You know it would cost a fortune, Axe, and I think it belongs on TV, not in a movie, but I'm with you. I'd like to see Alan Moore's top 10. Um, mm. That would be really good. He Lost Girls? Is that? You mean Lost Girls? No, I mean top 10. <laughs> no, I know. That would be wild. What do you think there, uh, Mr. Terrific? You got some ideas? I had a bunch of ideas, but they're all TV series, so then I had to pivot real hard. Um, I, so the last time, there is a, a Lost podcast somewhere, and it's Maddie and I, and... and uh, Matt having a conversation about this. And on that list, it was it was long before um, all this uh, outbreak in, in television. And so on the list, like Invincible was on the list and like all these things were on the list and like why the last man was on my list and like it's coming, Invincible's out. There's the things that have long been on my I wish for list. That list is getting smaller and smaller. I'm I'm going to have to change it to, I wish you would do it better. <laughs> like, yeah. that's what I'm going to have to change it to. Um, so Brennan's saying, like, what he what he's really open for is a, a good Geoff interpretation of the work he did rebuilding the Lantern universe. Uh, mm -hmm. The idea of more lanterns, more colors, uh, blackest night, brightest day, the whole war of uh, the Sinestro Corps war, those core pieces, um, and all of that would be fine, I'm sure, with Maddie, because she really just wants to see Barry Allen be the Blue Lantern of Hope. This is true. Yeah. Um, I, thought he, I thought he was love. No. <laughs> I think Wonder Woman gets the... She, she does. Yeah. 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 Just because um, they ruined it in Crisis, that's why. Oh, <laughs> uh, they, yeah. they trashed it all. Yeah. Um, 
And and Rick's asking like, what origin? Like, what characters really? So first of all, I will say this: I know the whole world is burned out on origin movies. I'm not. I can watch origin movies all day. So I, a I, good origin movie is gold. I'll rewatch uh, Captain America, and then I'll watch Wonder. And and if they're a period piece, even better. Like I'm fully tied in because I love those period pieces that are really good. Um, I love the the idea of an origin story. I don't want to jump into the Green Lantern universe. I want I throw away Ryan Reynolds and give me a really good origin story for Hal Jordan. Or if you're going to do uh, John Stewart, give me a good origin story. Like I want the origin story. I this I thing where like, you say, if I could pick an origin story, I'd pick Nightwing, and I'd want. But I, I want, like, an origin story that's, like, from literally start to, like, Nightwing as Batman. And if you have to do, like, some of it as flashbacks or, like, that's what I want. So one of my favorite stories uh, Mark Wade wrote, and it's, it's kind of collectively known. I think you can get it as a graphic novel. It's called The Barry Allen Saga. And it is the story in which Wally comes to terms with having to replace Barry as the Flash. Best Flash story ever written. Is that Bar none. Is that the one you we used to read? It's one of the ones we read. Does he go to work for the IRS at some point during that? Is that part of that story? No. So okay. in this in the story, um, Barry's been dead for five years, six years. He died in the crisis. Mm -hmm. yeah. and, and by the way, right? Uh, Arrow stealing more shit. It's 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 Barry who dies in the crisis, not. Not uh, impossible. The show's still on. I just saw it. I just saw commercials for it. I mean. So, in it, he he's been gone, and and Wally's kind of been there, being the Flash, replacing him. But he's not quite as fast, and his powers kind of wax and wane, and he can't. Re he's not really hit his stride as the Flash. And then one day on Christmas Eve, he's out with Jay Garrick because they, you know, the Flash family, they they got a kind of tight thing going on. And at, at the end of Christmas Eve, there's the doorbell rings, and they open it up, and it's Barry. And you get this like, and that's the cliffhanger of the comic, like Barry's alive. And then the whole story, they're trying to figure out what's going on and slowly see cracks in Barry's psyche. And then in the end, it's revealed that it's Professor Zoom. And he's come back, but he doesn't, he didn't know, like he, something had happened to his mind. He's come back and now he's going to replace Barry and destroy his name. And it's, it's the mental breakdown of Wally realizing like, somebody was always going to replace his uncle. So it's either going to be Zoom or it's going to be him. And it and you realize what had held Wally back all this time is that he didn't want people to forget his uncle. And it's this great Flash story. Like if I could have any movie, that's the Flash movie that I want. It's brilliant. And it's very much what you're talking about, Maddie, where it's told with the inner monologue running. And then at the end of the story, he is truly... The Flash, and that's what you want for the Nightwing movie, where at the mm -hmm. end of the story, he's Batman. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Although, 100%. Barry Allen's better than Wally West. Yeah, that's that's not true at all. Wally's yeah, the greatest Flash. That's so true. She's, she's just hard sold on that, that little scientist geek. It's, I based my entire degree around him. Don't take this away from me. I have like a whole year left. All right. All right, what do you got for us? All right, so movies. Uh, yeah. I want an Iron Fist movie. Oh my goodness, a giant kung fu movie that also involves him hugging out a dragon and then fighting. I mean, if they want to do the beginning of uh, the last Iron Fist story, that would be fantastic because yeah. you'd have enough of a hook that people remember him from the TV show a little bit. Yeah. But it's super kung fu fights. It's all over the place. It'd be, it'd be great. Uh, next, um, if we're going to do origin stories, uh, let's do uh, the... West Coast Avengers. You already have a uh, war machine. It already exists. You can already bring in like Falcon or somebody to tie over. You can have Wonder Man. You can have a couple other sub people over there. Yep. And the idea of the Avengers are big enough now. We can't all just be in New York all the time. We got to be other places. How about a West Coast Avengers? Um, what else do I want? Warlock. Adam <laughs> Warlock. Oh, well, my Adam goodness. Warlock. Yeah. Time, oh, okay. Fighting himself as, as the Magus. Like, yeah trying to prove that he can, like, you can do the whole story of the, they want to give the, the gauntlet to someone, so he tries to have it. 
and then he winds up having to fight himself and realizes that he can't. You can end it with him giving the, the gems to everybody if you wanted to do it that way. Or he just says, you don't tie it into that at all. He just has crazy whacked out space adventures. Like you can just go that way with it. And there've been enough shows that have been trippy lately. I think you could do that more as a show than a movie, but you never know. Um, I was going to cheat a little bit and say uh, Lupin the Third, which is a, an anime and a manga. He's a famous thief. He goes stealing just things. He steals from bad people. So it's kind of like Leverage, but before Leverage was out. And mm -hmm. so a big heist Mission Impossible style movie. Um, and then uh, I wrote it down as a joke originally. And then I segued to this. Uh, new Warriors then. We'll do a New Warriors movie. Um, because you can do an origin. It's a team movie. It's the, you, have, you have young kids that you can kind of, that have impressive powers slash street level powers and that tie into this idea of they're inspired by the Avengers and want to do things. And so you go from there. Yeah. Uh, I think all of that is great. Uh, so I'll give you mine real quick. I, I already told you for the longest of times. Uh, uh, so my, the Flash story obviously is a movie that I would, I would love to see. Um, Planetary, but I think you've got to do it as a TV series would be, you'd be, you'd be blown away. You'd be captivated. It's a brilliant story. Um, I think, you know, it's, it's hard to think about getting them to do a movie and not want to see Kingdom Come. Kingdom Come is just epic. And then, I, like, I would kind of think to the other side, like, so many of the ones that I wanted to see have been made um, or are being made, are being released. But if you're like me and you like some stories that are non-superhero, Ex Machina is a wonderful Brian K. Vaughn uh, series that I would really like to see. And keeping in the vein of uh, non kind of superhero y stuff, I think it would be a blast, uh, an absolute blast to do DMZ. I think if you've read Brian Wood's DMZ, it's such a great study of what life in a uh in a um, second american civil war would be like and and man there there have been times in the last few years where i've been like i mean maybe he's got a crystal ball like maybe these <laughs> things are really going to happen so um and i could i could list off tons because i i've got comic books for days but i wanted to throw out a couple that i didn't think people would be familiar with so that if you're interested in the stories you can go run them down uh, you, there is some great stuff coming. Um, Sweet Tooth just dropped uh, mm. yesterday. Um, well, I'm sorry, real quick. What, what was the one you just mentioned? Uh, DMZ. DMZ. DMZ, thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thanks to you guys, I'm probably going to wind up at a comic book store tomorrow. Because, <laughs> hey, well, be careful. I, some of that you'd be paying to the nose. I, <laughs> I love anything post-apocalyptic or, or, or that name. I... Just, I love that shit. And I, as soon as you said that, I immediately want to go read this now. Sweet if you, if Sweet you're, uh, if you're, like, they did a lot of, they went through a series, uh, both major companies went through one where they felt like, let me tell you the story of what happens at the end. Yeah. And so it was like the For last all of them stories, the last. Yeah. Long before they did those, Peter David, who, by the way, wrote the best Hulk that's ever been written. Uh, and so if you're down with the best Hulk ever written, you should read uh, Future Imperfect, and it would make a wonderful movie. Time travel, evil Hulk, good Hulk, like it would be, you'd love it. Well, Mav, you actually probably know Peter David, not to be like, oh, you don't know Peter David, but you probably know Peter David because he did the best X Factor run ever as well, actually. Like he came in right around, I don't know if you, right when X-Men 1 kicked off and they split X-Men and Uncanny, he got X Factor, and he was on X Factor for a whole bunch of years, and he was really good on X Factor as well. It was Havoc, Polaris, Wolfsbane, Strong Guy, Multiple Man, and he did some really good stuff there. He as did well. do some great stuff there. Uh, but the other thing that he did that uh, got me thinking along this vein, so so you can add like Future and Perfect to my list of movies I'd like to see. Uh, he wrote something called The Last Avenger Story years before everybody started doing the last of this and the last of that yep. and it's pretty cool it's and it would make a great 
Like if it showed up in the what if series that they're going to do, it would be the most popular episode. Peter David was a great writer. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Those, those are some great options. Now let's, as we are. Would he like East, East meets East of West or East meets West? Is that a post-apocalyptic one or is that more of Western? Is that. So it's a, it's a little bit of each. Listen, if you like, um, like post-apocalyptic one side, I, I think Mav might actually like, because it'll tickle his like horror adventure bone. Mm -hmm. um, Manifest Destiny. Oh yeah, yep. And if you guys don't know Manifest Destiny, it's the story of the exploration of America, but in America where like Cyclops and other like things out of mythology and horror still live. Mm. And it's a oh. very like weird, trippy, but but cool story. No, that's what that's that's what sucked me into the walking because I, I come across the walk. I was at a Barnes and Nobles before Walking Dead became a TV show. And I came and I, I just happened to walk by and I saw the word dead. Didn't that's all I saw. And I turned and I went, Walking Dead. Is this about zombies? And I pulled it out and I bought it and I was hooked. So, I will I will read anything having to do with zombies post apocalypse the whole nine. So uh I will check uh, those I could, out. I could give you lists of stuff on that. Um you go. by the way, th does everybody know that they did a a version and I think it's still going of Scooby Doo based on the Scooby Gang comes together because there's an apocalypse going on. I think it's called like Scoop Scooby Doo Apocalypse or something. Yeah, it's that's right. No, I did not. Yeah. Oh, I think I saw bits of that. Is that the one with all kind of like edgy though? And yeah. Daniel? Oh yeah. Okay. Like like I picked it up and read some of it. I was like, so Daphne's a badass and Fred's like buff, but kind of like a little soft. Like wasn't oh, he always kind of like that though? Yeah. Um, the Scooby Doo Where Are You series though, like where every episode is in, is they bring in these other characters. That is really good, actually. I've gotten it for the kids a couple times, and I really like it. They do a really good job of doing that Scooby Doo Where Are You episode, but as a comic for the kids. Well, exactly. I mean, for the kids, I had to read it like seven or eight times to make sure that the kids would like it, and then I had to keep it in my room because yeah. they don't know how to handle a comic for the book. kids. But uh, exactly what? for the kids, you know. I think. I think Matt Brendan hit it on the nose when he said, just read anything Kirk. Just Kirkman, yep. Yeah. Kirkman's like great. like Kirkman. Kirkman is yeah. awesome, you know. He's really good. That's why Invincible's so good. That's He's done a lot of great stuff. I feel the same way about most of John's work, most of Wade's work. Like, mm -hmm. there's a few guys that if you just like the tone of what they're doing, they're going to do good stuff. Definitely. <clears throat> All right. Let's, let's recircle back because we got a couple other things that I want to do. And we're not going to have time for everything, but it's been a good chat about it. But uh, because we had some question marks earlier, I want to throw it out there. What are your top five DC movies? Uh, I'll, go first and I'll, I'll go first and take a shelling. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know. Um, my top five, um, Superman 2. A strong uh, choice, Superman. Lo, lo, not a fan of Margot Kidder, just just not. Really? But, I, but I can look past her. Um, number four would be Superman, and again, I could I could do without the whole. Can you read my mind? If you just cut that out, it'd be perfect. Um, Batman, Michael Keaton, would be number three. Number two would be Wonder Woman. And number one, I'm, I'm gonna get shellacked for because you've already you've already thrown you've already thrown shade on it, but oh, I'm gonna do it out there anyway because I was overwhelmed by one individual's performance. I like the Dark Knight. I will watch I will watch Heath Ledger Joker over and over and over again, and that's so. Go ahead. I was just worried you were going to say Man of Steel, so that's fine. Well, I, was I, was just gonna say say, I didn't say like that. Man of Steel, but there's no way I would put that in my top five for obvious reasons. All right, Chris, have you got a list? All right. And I was like Maddie. I had trouble distinguishing between all the DC type of movies, right? So I went with whatever. Yep. So number five for me, uh, and again, because the way they, from my basis of movies is how they portrayed the comic. The Killing Joke. The animated movie. 
awesome job. They did a great job of bringing that that graphic novel to life. It was perfect. Uh, number four for me was Batman Assault from Arkham. If you haven't seen any Batman movies, that one was the, it's one of the best ones. Uh, number three for me was uh, Suicide Squad Hell to Pay. And that one was tied with me for Wonder Woman as well. Okay. And number two, Shazam. And number one, which has not been mentioned, had not been brought up, for me, Watchmen. For a reason. <laughs> if you look at comic to movie, it was the best done. Like, you could watch that movie and look at the comic. You saw the comics in the movie. You literally saw the panels. I, did, I didn't see the giant squid. Good point. I'm not saying it was perfect. But, but it was good. It was really well done. That is the meanest thing that anyone has ever said about the Watchmen comics, ever. Brendan's with you. It. He likes it. He's pro it, so he's pro this vote. All right, Maddie, what have you got? Am I doing this in order, or? Uh, you can just throw them out if you want. I don't even know that I can get five out there, but I'll do my best. Um, Wonder Woman, Shazam, Flashpoint. Oh, okay. good one. Um, I really like the Judas contract. Yep. Um, I think for a fifth one, oh, uh, the animated Dark Knight Returns. Oh, good one. Yeah. Too. Good one, too. All right, what do you got for us there, Mr. Terrific? I'm gonna have to try and find some of these animated ones because I gotta be honest, the only animated one I saw was, uh, oh, the Superman one, What's So Funny About Peace, Love, and Understanding where he fights the British superheroes. Yeah. And it was all right. Yeah. Um, it was like- That point's great. And I think it's on Netflix or it, it was, was on Netflix. I was going boop, 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 boop. Oh, okay, yeah, I'll watch this. Um, so I'm just gonna say, wait, did they make Dick Tracy? Did DC make Dick Tracy? Oh, absolutely. No, so, so, that was Disney. Never mind. Disney made that. Sorry. Well, Disney made it, but it was in conjunction with DC. Oh, was it? Okay. Oh, uh, then I'm going to say yeah. Dick Tracy. Um, and then I'm going to say Superman 2, because I love it. Oh, my goodness. I love it so much. So yeah, much. Totally agree. The, the lights were on out there while he was safe in there. And just it crushes Zod's hand. Sorry. Anyway, uh, the, the, the first Batman with Michael Keaton is probably one of the best of the ways to do it. Plus Jack Nicholson is so good as the Joker. Just the way it's done, it's done in that kind of weird style. It was so different than the TV show. So it created its own thing. Uh, Shazam was absolutely fantastic. And then Mask of the Phantasm. Mask of the oh. Phantasm is an absolutely fantastic Batman movie. Um, such a good Joker. I mean, Mark Hamill is so amazing as the Joker to begin with. Such a good story. Um, just really, really well done. It is. It is exceptionally well done, and, and you, you stole a little thunder from me when you jumped on that one. Um, hey, Eric, have you seen Batman, the original animated series? Like, the animated series Batman? Yeah, the one from the 90s, right? Yeah. Yeah. But, Matt, have you seen it? No. Okay, oh. you've got to see that. Yeah. I'm, I, I'm, I've got I'm, to see that. Well, it's funny that you bring it. I, I will admit I'm not a big anime, you know, watching anime. Mm-hmm. Not big in that, but I will say I, I, before we were going to move on, I was going to ask because it piqued my interest. I know there's a Superman anime where in this alternate timeline he comes down and he he's in Russia. Have oh, you guys saw Red, Red Sun? Sun. Is that good? It's a yeah. good movie. Yeah. All okay, right. I'm going to check that one out too. Thank before, you. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Before I forget, now that you're, if I could have a movie, maybe The Nail. Or oh, League. Justice yeah, League, the nail. The nail. Yep. That'd be good. Good take. Yeah. Because um, you had good take <laughs> about, her own, about her own pick. She's like, No, I just nail. mean that good it take. would be a good take on take, Superman. Man. Like, you're not just getting, oh, like, the you. same story over and over. Yes. Oh, wait. You know what? Actually, since you brought it up, because I mean, it's not a DC movie, per se, I don't think. I would have to put Brightburn on my list of movies. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Because I really loved 
it, for the exception of one part, and for those of you who haven't seen Brightburn, I'm going to spoil something. Five, four, three, two, one. The only part of Brightburn I, I just can't put my head around is you watched your son stick his hands into a lawnmower. So why did you think trying to shoot him in the back of the head with a gun was going to work? Other than that, I love that movie. Yeah. So anyway, I'm sorry. Go ahead. No, no problem. So... So for me, I like I'm probably gonna say, uh, what's my order here? Wonder Woman's probably number five. Um, Shazam is probably no, actually, probably. Um, what what was it? Uh, Mask of the Phantasm is probably number four. Number three is probably Shazam. Number two is probably um, the Batman, the Dark Knight Returns. And number one is Superman 2. I think it's the best movie they've made, which mm -hmm. is a shame because it was 25 something, 28, 30 years ago. And oh, they haven't God. been able to do better. And it's just, oh, it's a shame as well God. because... You know, you talk about the idea of, because I just saw some on Facebook recently, about a picture of, you know, Christopher Reeves is, is Superman. And it's not even so much that he was just really good at that, but it was also that, one, he got the idea of what Clark Kent is, but that's a story about a guy who is a, is, is a superhero, and his, his biggest flaw in this movie is that he's just trying to have a normal life. Like, it's the idea of, like, no, you, you can't have a normal life. Unfortunately, this is just the world you live in. And he's like, all right, I get it now. I got to go back to this. I got to give everything else up. And then he goes back and becomes Superman. And it's kind of a sad decision. And, you know, and he has to, you know, make a lot of sacrifices then because of it. And it's like, no one else has tried to tell a movie, I think, that good, which is unfortunate because it's like, he's a very human character. And it seems like no one wants to make him a very human character, unfortunately. And I just don't yeah. know why well and i think we got the other side of it right like i think this is one of my the crux of my dislike of Zack snyder's is misunderstanding of the characters exactly yeah. we got and by the way man. jeff it's 35 plus years yeah. Ago. yeah i believe it so we we get from Zack snyder we get a superman who doesn't even understand what it means to want a normal life like doesn't understand how and and is grim and dark and then we get a Batman from Nolan who's trying to quit being Batman. Like, you've just completely missed the... Like, Bruce Wayne built himself a not normal life because that's what he's always intended for him to have. He didn't spend his whole life going, maybe I won't be necessary. He's convinced he'll be necessary for the rest of his life. Mm -hmm. And and so Nolan just didn't know who he was writing in the same way that Zack Snyder doesn't know who Superman is. I was just listening to... Because uh, it came up on Spotify, so I want to go down a rabbit hole. But uh, The Crash Test Dummies... Uh, Ballad of Superman song yeah. and I was listening to that uh, just yesterday and I'm like this song gets it so yeah. hard about what being Superman is because it says it says things like Superman he, he could have made lots of money he never robbed a bank he could have but it never even occurred to him that like that's what you do he went out and got a hey, nine to five hey, he's a reporter he said hey. you know, he worked he worked hard every day Tarzan runs off to the jungle but Superman just Hometown band, baby. That was yeah. they're from Winnipeg. <laughs> you know, and it's and it's like that's what makes Superman Superman is the fact that like he becomes a reporter so he can help people even when he's not helping people. He likes meeting people, spending time with people. He doesn't need money, he doesn't need anything. He could just go live up in the fortress of solitude till he hears someone yell and then just come out and save them and then just go back. I mean, but he doesn't, and he just like it. He's so good. Again, that's what I really liked about Shazam is this idea deep down. I mean, he, he actually kind of was like, because he's a kid. He's like, oh, I'll do this to make money. And I'm bouncing lightning around. But then he realizes like, you become well, with the, the crystal or whatever. Like, he's so good that it's not even a temptation for him to be bad. Like at the end of the movie, when he picks it up and he's like, oh, do what? Turn on all my friends. I'm psych. I can't even hear this thing. That's stupid. And then he just like crushes it. You know um, who would have heard that thing and and been tempted and given in? Peter Diver. Parker, because he's a oh, piece of trash. What? How dare you, sir? How dare you? Not only did he go use his powers to make money, he thought it was the right thing to do, and he let the criminal get away just to and be he, a penny little. You didn't grow up a poor kid. You didn't grow up a poor orphan just trying to support 
your 70 year old uncle who's got to go out and work so that you can eat pancakes every day. You sell out one marriage. What? Billy Batson is a poor orphan. And a better human than Peter Parker. <laughs> he was created by Fawcett Comics. That doesn't count. That doesn't okay. count. Okay. <laughs> you also have a tiger for a friend. Yeah, a talking tiger for a friend. You want to talk about realism? <laughs> Don't do this. Valentine asks if uh, if Eric is from Canada, because why else would he be listening to Crash Test Dummies? <laughs> oh, no, it came up. It was I was actually my Spotify. It's played uh, the Ballad of uh, Peter Pumpkinhead. It played the Crash Test Dummies version of that. Oh, that's an awesome, awesome one. So <laughs> Brendan, song. Brendan has said quite concisely, screw my Spider-Man hate. And Brendan, I just want you to know, anytime you want to come on the podcast and have a talk conversation about why Peter Parker is a piece of shit, I'm totally open to it. However, he sold out his marriage to save his always dying aunt from dying another time. And the greatest critique I ever heard of that was he literally spends days talking to gods, scientists with time machines, and magicians, not to mention just regular doctors. And he's like, you know who I should go talk to? Satan. That's who I should deal with. Because and that's, that's the level of Peter Parker. Up to that point, though, fantastic guy. Fantastic guy. He's completely trying. And by the way, the, the Spider-Man movie that everybody loves, Into the Spider-Verse, mm -hmm. in it, you see who Peter Parker really is. Selfish, all about himself, a complete and utter ass. A wonderful mentor to a young child just trying to learn. No, that's not what happens to take in that sacrifices movie at, at the end. What? No way. What are you talking about? Are we His not watching the same movie? To, to try and use the kid. He doesn't even care about the kid. Of course he cared. How dare you, sir? How dare you? My entire you? childhood right now. I think, <laughs> did you uh, overhear me having the secret sidebar really quick, urgent conversation with my boyfriend in the kitchen the other night about how Spider-Man was a no, and I don't know how we'd gotten this far in our relationship <laughs> without mentioning that, but it was a hard no. Good for you, sweetheart. I mean, this is one of these moments you just got to decide you're not for me. I was like, this is, you either agree and like change everything you actually think and agree, or this is going to be a problem. You're like, favorite flash right now. He goes, uh, impulse. You're like, get out of my house. He doesn't know who impulse is. We're working on it. It's, uh, all right. So let's, let's close this out with the big one. Uh, Marvel's been doing movies for longer than everybody seems to think. And we're going to talk about our favorite Marvel movies and we're going to get everybody's top five. So who wants, oh. I'll, I'll go, f I, because I know my list is going to be like nobody X -Men else. X-Men 2, X-Men 3. My, my, no, no, my, I, got, I got a little variety in there, maybe. Uh, did they make Dick Tracy? I just got to clarify. Did they, did they do that one? Is that <laughs> one of the ones they did? Um, number five for me would be the first X-Men movie simply because I got to see the X-Men live. That yeah, was cool. And, and it was a good it was a good movie. I liked the first one. Um, hey, can I just comment on that? Did you, like me, take your wife and then spend the whole time seeing it for the first time having to explain what she was seeing to yes. her while it was yes. happening on the screen? Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> no, I've been I've been married for 20, almost 25 years. I'm smart enough to know what movies not to take her to see. Fun story. She'll also two weeks later yell at you for seeing it without her. I've had that happen before too because I misjudged what she would want to see. So you know, oh, no, no, oh, no. What she Maddie means is we took it her. Like half in America, it happened on. Uh, she was watching those movies, but has no idea what's going on. Maddie uh, and I will be sitting there, and and a movie will come up on TV, and she'll go, "Did we not see? Did we see that movie?" And Maddie and I'd be like, "Yeah," and she'll be like, "I didn't see it." And we're like, "You went with us." did because i remember answering all of your questions while i was also seeing it for the first time when, when i did when i did the podcast on um on the horror movies um oh, yeah. when we were talking i'm doing a stream brother can you bother me later what do you need I'm spending 24 hours that's great you could have waited to tell me okay can you close the door now thank you thanks for the interruption though my boy house is on fire house is on fire dad it's fine it's not I, there's no smoke dad, i want here. my 24 bucks uh <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, I don't even know what the fuck I was saying now. What saying the something about a, something, something horror movie, oh, something, something. A horror movie thing. When, when Before we started, you know, and I think it was Chris who asked me, he's like, does your wife watch horror movies? I'm like, man, I couldn't get my wife to watch a horror movie. I got her to watch The Walking Dead. That was a shock. But anyway, back to the list. Um, number four for me, and eh, I don't know how you guys will feel. I like Guardians of the Galaxy, number two. 
Uh, you're going to notice a trend here with the Did laughing. Did you see number two? Yes. Vol I did not like it. But no, but number one is just clearly superior. Maverick, if you scroll gone. up the list, he's done. Oh. You, you scared him off, Jeff. Where'd he go? You scared him. <laughs> he just tapped out. I'm out. All right, let's see who I can get rid of next. It's going to be me, but only because I uh, got to get up early. You got <laughs> stuff going on? Okay, Maddie's got to go next then. Right. Oh, wait. Are we oh. back? Are we back? <laughs> I thought I thought I thought you kicked me. I, I, I was looking. I was looking at my phone, going, "Did that opinion just get me kicked?" I liked Guardians of the Galaxy Volume Two. Uh, number three, I had Thor Ragnarok. I like funny movies. I don't know what to tell you. Number two, I liked the original, the first Guardians of the Galaxy. He said he told you it was further up the list. Yeah. And my number one favorite Marvel movie was Deadpool. Oh, because you could literally, no bullshit, you could have Ryan Reynolds sit in front of a camera and just be sarcastic for two hours, and I would pay money to go watch it. Hey, can I, just, I, need, I need to take a break from making fun of Mav, so I'm going to make fun of Rick, who thinks the Venom movie was good. That movie was so bad. I can't believe you sat through that and thought it was good, Rick. And they're making number two. I can't believe that you sat through it and then thought it was a top five movie. I can hear you saying, yeah, I didn't mind paying. I paid money for it, but to put it in top five. Uh, I will say this about Deadpool, though. It's not top five, but there were times there I was laughing so hard I could not breathe. And, and, to, and to be fair, again, and, and, I'll, and I'll be honest about it because it's, it just it is. I have not watched the Avengers thing from start to finish. I, I've seen... Mm -hmm. uh, Iron Man 1 and 2, I've seen the Thor movies, I've seen uh, uh, Captain America, and then I believe I watched Winter Soldier, I saw Doctor Strangelove. I, 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 I did you watched I, I, Winter Soldier? Huh? Like, you don't know if you watched Winter Soldier? You'd know. No, I don't, I'm sorry, I did not watch Winter Soldier yet, no. Did I anyone soldier in the winterish time? Was there any snow while soldiering was going on? <laughs> Right. Maddie just got up and stormed off because you haven't watched she The Winter did. Soldier. <laughs> She's coming down to Florida to make you watch it right now. She's got to get up early in the morning. So um, I just need to call this out because I've known for a yeah. long time that Axel and I are soulmates. Because he says Fraggle Rock is better than Ragnarok. I, I don't know what to tell you. I like... Yeah. You know, and what's really what really gets me is that we are all in a Fed where we all just love the comedy stylings of most of the people there. I like the comedy. I like right. I like Chris Pratt. I thought Thor Ragnarok was fucking hysterical. It was terrible, <laughs> just terrible. It might be terrible, but Crash. I remember. I don't when it when it comes to the Avengers. I know very little about any of them other than Iron Man and Captain America, and that's pretty much it. And I only know a little bit about those two. What I learned, I, what I know, I learned from movies. I, I, Thor was not a character that interested me. Yeah, I wasn't interested in. Yeah, he's still Thor, and he doesn't scream because a spinny blade comes near his head. Oh, I, I hey, this, this is the top five of what I like, and I said I would go first yeah, so that everybody say, could go at me. And tell me how terrible my list was. But Deadpool was fucking awesome. I don't care what he was. Nobody's arguing about Deadpool. You got like, hold on. You get three things on your list we don't have a problem with. You get two things on your list that you should probably be punched in the face for. <laughs> and you should probably watch Winter Soldier. Uh, there... <laughs> that's not why I left my mind. He, he commented, that's why you got up and left. <laughs> No, I went to get my charger, but <laughs> no, and I and I want to watch these. I just um, I just, I just haven't got around to it yet. My my son actually, my oldest son is uh, he wants to watch the MCU from start to finish with me. So my plan is to watch it from start to finish. But what happened is I basically I just I got I got out of order, out of sequence, and I I started trying to watch something and I didn't know what was going on, so I just quit because I didn't know. Yeah. So I think it's important, this has to be acknowledged, because it might be Val's greatest line of all time. Oh, shit. 
Val says, if Matt is picking movies like he picks his fat, I'm surprised he didn't pick Captain Marvel. No, she's an actual woman. Maddie has no idea. That inside joke was gold, though. There's lots of high fives going on for this one. And, but you notice that I'm not the one high fiving, right? That's okay. We <laughs> still think it's hilarious. Because I, hey, whatever. I like what I like, and I've said it's all along. So like... I'll knock that out of the park. Okay. Uh, who wants <laughs> to go next? That's even better than his Helen Keller line. <laughs> who's who's going next? Go oh, next. Um, all right. all right, so number five, obviously, Hulk starring Edward Norton. Number four, Hulk starring Eric Bana. Three, Hulk starring uh, Mark Ruffalo. Two, follow-up Hulk starring whoever they put in there. No, I'm kidding. None of those people are in there. Uh, I'm going to put number five as an honorary mention, actually. It's a really good movie, but it needs to be respected. Blade. Totally the first agree. huge Marvel movie, all right? Yeah. Spawned, spawned a trilogy, was a great movie. I mean, a great movie of its time. Very well done. Very cool movie. It's a shame that Blade is not brought back more often. Spawned a trilogy. Mm -hmm. And as a result, in the worst of the trilogy, we saw Ryan Reynolds in the MCU for the first time. We because did. Because Deadpool was not his first character. His first yeah. character was Hannibal King. Mm -hmm. and, and let's not forget, you talk, that, that is the quintessential stole the movie from everyone else in it. Mm -hmm. oh, it was a pretty because bad the, movie. Because the only reason to watch the third movie is for Ryan Reynolds' character. That's oh, and, and Val points out Triple H was in it as well. well I was just going to say, is also it's the, the first crossover between wrestling and movies. Right. Plus, it had a vampire Pomeranian. Oh, good aside. Like that, you know. <laughs> um, and then, in no particular order, really, um, the I'm going to say the first Spider Man with uh, Tobey Maguire. Okay. Uh, I thought that was really good. I was battling between that and two, but I feel two is cliche to say. It's really good, but like because it's so good, I think it's cliche to say. Um, I unfortunately have not seen the the Winter of Our Soldier Content. Um, I know I should. I know I will like it very much. I've never seen it. Every Marvel movie is two hours, 57 minutes. I don't have two hours and 57 minutes to sit down and watch the movie. I know I should. I know I should. I I what not. time did you get on? Why are you on here when you could be watching that? I, we watch I, it I every time I come home. We did. It's a great question. It's a great. I question. want to know why nobody watch. got up and walked away when he didn't watch it. But I so, I'm, I'm, so, so I'm, I'm going to say Captain America no. Civil War though, because I really liked Captain America Civil War. I liked it a lot. And we've had discussions about this as well offline. I thought they did a better job of starting the Civil War, a more sensical reason for the Civil War than the comic book reason. For the Civil War. I thought it made a lot more sense. I thought it was really good. Um, X-Men 2, again, absolutely fantastic. So many things that were so well done in that movie. Yeah. Uh, the first sequel in a long time that came out that was like way better than the first one even. And then Spider-Verse. Uh, if you don't preach at the Church of Spider-Verse, I don't know what's going on because that movie was amazing. It is so well done. And that moment when he jumps off the roof and makes the leap and the music kicks in, it's like that's it's the same as when Billy jumps off the roof and says Shazam and the bolt comes down, he flies off, and it's like that's fantastic. You were so well and plus uh, John Mulaney's Spider Ham is hilarious. You are okay with Nicolas Cage. I'm okay with Nicolas Cage. Nicolas Cage is great because Nicolas Cage is playing a a over exaggeration of a 50s character. Also, the prowler is scary. I took my kids to that, like, oh, hey, let's go see a Spider-Man movie. And they spent the whole time being scared of the Prowler, like, when he's, like, know. hunting Miles Morales in, like, his room. And he's going, Bruh. like, that's a scary part. There you go. I'm still coping with the fact that you haven't seen The Winter Soldier. I haven't seen The Winter Soldier. I know he gets in an elevator and he says something funny and they all grab him. Ha ha ha. And it's a meme. But anyway, um, you know. I'm kidding. I've seen this. I've seen the elevator fight. The internet exists, but uh, All right. so Chris, you want to go? Okay. Uh, number five, Black Panther. Good choice. Excellent, excellent rendition of the comic. Number four, Avengers Endgame. I, I just thought they did such a good job of kind of wrapping up everything uh, from that that whole uh, series of movies. 
just a good way to do it. Number three, and this is probably where I'm going to get beat on Ant Man. Why would you get beat on oh, Ant Man's great? I just say, I just say, I don't, Ant Man was phenomenal. not like I said Ragnarok. <laughs> Number two for me was Doctor Strange. That's I, really high for Doctor Strange. I, I really, I thought the way they they came off the comics was really well done. So, I think he I was think, a good casting for that too. He was. He was fantastic. That's for sure. Yeah. And then Deadpool. Absolutely Deadpool. Not Deadpool 2. I wasn't as pleased with some of the cho character choices, but Deadpool was... You can watch that movie, never see a comic book in your life, and watch Deadpool and just pee yourself laughing. Mm -hmm. But is that because it's a good movie, or is that just because of Ryan Reynolds? Just because of Ryan Reynolds. Just because of Ryan Reynolds. <laughs> Right? But like he I, is the movie, and so isn't that, I mean, isn't an exactly. electric performance by an actor a large part of, I mean, they still had to give him lines to work off of, and there's still some really nice action set pieces. The car he, fight is a really good action set piece, if nothing else, and the, the montage of him, like, hunting down Francis is a really good set I piece agree. as well. I mean, you know. I'm with you. Maddie, do you have kind of your top Marvels? Yeah. Um, so five, I really struggled with. I was gonna say Deadpool, but I think for like honorary purposes, because I think it's actually a Marvel movie. Uh, Big Hero Six, it is yeah. a Marvel movie, it's a good movie, yeah. Um, yeah. oh, yeah, four, Black Panther. <coughs> um, I really just like the Dormelage. Do I like the love interest that's not Storm? No. But if I had to pick out one thing, that'd probably be it. Um, three, Avengers. Just the first one. I think it was honestly just, that was one of the first, like, full team movies that I saw. And I remember the promo for it at the end of, was it Iron Man 3? Yes. or No, it was Iron Man 1. Iron where he beats Nick Fury yeah. in the mm -hmm. post credit scene. And you realize it's coming, and I remember the build-up for it. So that one was... And then two, Captain America, First Avenger. And then one, Winter Soldier. And I'm I would just like to take a moment to point out hmm? that since it's her number three movie, there'd be no Avengers without Captain Marvel. Because where did they get the name for the initiative? No, it isn't. It's not a thing. Uh, it's canon. It was in the films. He's it's trash. That's not canon. At the, of the airplane. That's how canon works. It was in the films. No, it isn't. Canon is the I original don't... content. The films aren't original. They're based on other things. Fight them, That can't be right. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> You're arguing with a Brattel. You Nick can't Fury can't and he was black that. until the movies. And now he's black in the comics. So I don't know what to tell you there. I mean, you know. What? Nick Fury. What? Nick Fury. Well, that, now it's canon because it was in the comics. Actually, in the comics, in the that is not Nick Fury. No. No, it's a clone or something. It's some stupid LMD. thing where like, you shot the Maybe watcher. Life model decoy. No, life, yeah, there it is. LMD. Yep. So, um, so my, my list is only slightly different from Maddie's, but I, I do want to say, like, I think a lot of really great movies got called out. So Deadpool makes my list, obviously, and it makes it higher. Uh, it's probably number two for me. Number one is still The Winter Soldier. I think it's the best superhero movie that's ever been made. It's a great um, spy movie. What's that? It's a great spy movie. It's right. Um, so I what think, did you think of Falcon and Winter Soldier? I, it was lukewarm on it. Okay. It was I'm okay. Pro, it was fine. I'm pro Sharon Carter being a villain because I anti Sharon Carter. So she's not for the canon in this case. No. This is the place where her love of canon goes to die. Just Sharon Carter. Um, I, I think Ant Man needs to get uh, respect, so I'm certainly down with that. I think the fact that you called out the Edward Norton version of the Hulk should not be overlooked. I think that the Avenger should not be overlooked. And I think that Blade should not be overlooked. So I'm I, like, I my list is so similar. It's tough to kind of pick five right off the top, but I can tell you my one, two, three will go. Uh, one is the Winter Soldier. Two is Deadpool. 
and three. Wow, three might be a little tougher for me to decide on, but it might be Blade. It's definitely not Spider Man. Include the Spider Verse. Okay. Of any type. There's only 15 of them to choose from. They just keep making Spider Man. I mean, they really do. Yeah. I will admit that out of all the Spider Mans, Into the Spider Verse was the best one that I oh, saw. Yeah. Oh, yeah. But it took me forever to watch it because I was not convinced that it was going to be a good movie. I, so. I, I have to admit, I th Blade was originally on my list. I didn't put it on my list because I didn't want to hear a bunch of incest vampire bullshit. I mean, so since you guys have put it on there, I will remove Thor Ragnarok and change it with Blade. That's much more appropriate. 30 years ago, a young man no, goes no. into the theater and the fate of E Fed wrestling is forever changed. I can't. I've heard so much incest vampire bullshit. That was like, there's Stop no way I'm incest vampires then. It's a very right simple now. way to do that. <laughs> there is there is a, a lot of crap we uh we waded into this there's so much content out there and and obviously lots of interest from you know all of our all of our player base who who like it i really appreciate that you guys took some time to go over this we put this off for months i'm super glad maddie that you took the time to jump in and and share with us i you should have to suffer the same crap i do listen to all of eric's opinions about this stuff so yes you should hey but real quick i know you're getting ready to sign off but real quick i just wanted to tell everybody uh, that's in the in the chat next weekend i'm going to shoot for doing another pro wrestling podcast i'm also going to try to get grayson over here and get a one-on-one -on -one with him because he's always interviewing everybody else. So if he has the time, I would point, but I can't tell which one. I think on mine, he's like way oh, down there. There. Yeah. Okay. So I would like to yeah. be able to sit down and do him the service that he's done for everybody else. And and let's 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 pick the mind of Nighthawk, of Austin James, of Cole Styles, of Acid Ed. If, if he's got availability next Saturday, I would like to try to do that. So I do not. I'm. Uh, it's my son's birthday, and we're going golfing. So Maybe then the following weekend. But I, that's something I would like to do down the road. But next Friday, I'm shooting to do a pro wrestling podcast. Uh, Chris, if you're around, and and man, I would love to have you because I know you've got opinions. And yes, Axel will talk about Sting and how much you hate him for 20 minutes. You're in. I was gonna say an idiot. I didn't want to say an idiot. You're very wrong about this, Axel. You can't help it. You're 23 years old. The world is new to you. You don't understand how baby faces work. You don't understand what it's like to be a tentpole of a federation. I get it. But the slander has to stop. It only makes you look bad. So I, I need to follow that up since you threw out the word baby face. It's important that you all know that Ryan and I have grown up and we are adult faces. We are. It's true. Sometimes you gotta make hard decisions, like letting your aunt die instead of selling your marriage to Satan. Uh, I will Spider say, Spider-Man being a classic Spider-Man Peter. jerk. Peter Parker is the worst. Before you sign off, Jeff, I too want to say, Maddie, it has been a breath of fresh air to have you, despite your dad being who he is, and glimpses of him in you. At least, I think, more of your mother is there than him. So that's good. Probably true. You should also get her to make a character and join FedEx, but just not tell anybody. There's 0% chance that either of them will ever I was find told out that I could be Wonder Woman, but I was also told that I could also never take part. So, Correct. Yeah. You, you Both those Woman things are true. Yeah. There, we, we have guys that would do things to you that your dad would never want to know about. I'd have to kill people. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, true. If I had a daughter, I probably would let her play. Would not. Ever. No sane person would allow their daughter to swim in these waters. Yeah, it was bad enough working at a comic store for five years. I already know more than I need to know. So uh, <laughs> Samite would protect you. You he would see you as a, as his maybe marry her. There we go. Yeah, that's yeah, exactly we why we don't do those things. The FBI <laughs> on the phone. I got to go take this. So, uh, yeah. we're, we're a call. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much for this. We'll see everybody. Maddie, get to sleep. You got an early morning.
Good night, everybody. Oh, Eric, bye. Been wrong about all his opinions. And Brendan, I wouldn't say goodbye without saying how much Peter Parker sucks balls. <laughs>